start, we're just going to do the roll call. Janet Pesatoro. Ah, Brian Barabee. Liz LeCluse. Hi, I'm Lindsay Hill. Karen Overfield. Okay. And Carol Robert. Good news to um, I'm not sure. I thought we were going to talk about. I'm not sure what you wanted to just. Well, Jan's not, Johnson's not here, so I thought for a minute you could tell Dan and Karen, since they didn't do the oh. forum, just about what you were just talking about oh, before yeah. we opened. Just in general, you yeah. know, regarding this case. Okay, so yeah. the MACC, the Mass Association of Conservation Commissioners, has an online discussion forum. There's a general forum and then one on invasive species. And anybody who is on a conservation commission can write in and ask anything. And there are people on there that, with lots of experience, um, one guy who responded to a lot, you know, responded a lot to my question, um, is actually an environmental consultant. So you get really good information for for free. And I had seen the forum there when I first went on their website a few years ago, but. I never used, like I just searched it once in a while to look up what other people, you know. But I never asked anything and I was just so, it was such a huge help. So I think it's just a great resource for us, for anybody who has a question about any. And I think there's a lot of other stuff on the website too. Yeah. So that's part of the thing is that beside the forum, there's other um, tips, you know, there's certain um, templates of things that have been issued by other towns and all kinds of other information. Mm, yeah. I can't remember. So, who has the MACC handbook? I have the actual I have handbook. A, a new one? No, it's old. I gave you the old one? Yeah. Okay. What's new? How new? Well, the navy blue, the dark navy blue one is the new one. Yeah, okay. this is teal. Yeah, you have the older one. Yeah. And Liz, do you, you have one? No, I. You just went online? I went online, yeah. Okay, and I, Heinz. I don't. Did I send you the link? Because I don't have any extra. I extras went to MACC. Thing. Can I get it from there? Um. Yes. You have to pay. Yeah, but you have to know what you're assigning in the login. I, I got a like generic login. I think it was member, and then some. I didn't log in yet. Okay, that might be all you need. I can't remember. So you there when they so when they have all the um, um, resources available, they yeah. have the e handbook available, yeah. and it may be whatever they sent you then. Um, yeah. That that's all you need. If if it's something different, I thought I might have sent you that initially. Pay for it. It's fifteen dollars. Okay. Oh, it should be. We're I members. Also, I actually yeah, thought I it was fifty dollars. No, paid fifteen dollars. Right. No, we have a. We're all already. We're already supposed to all have the ability to go on and use it. Uh, does that I count for associate members? No. Okay. Well, I had. I had a lot of exchange with them, so they knew I was from Bolton and I wasn't a member. So the the member price was fifteen, and then a non-member price was. Like fifty. Uh, oh. so I thought we paid for the commission already, right? And that so long as on, I, only one person could be on at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I thought that the login was for all of us to be able to log in mm -hmm. at already. So let me look into that. I'm glad I just asked about it because I, I paid them something too. But I wanted a printed one because I wanted to be able to write on pages and stuff. So maybe that was. Why yeah, that might be different if you bought a book yeah. or, or yeah. whatever. But the, yeah. I don't know if, is that, you got the big handbook? Yeah, the big, yeah. 15? Uh, or 50, might have to pay more than that. That's probably 50, 50 yeah, yeah, for the big So we, we had purchased, I thought we had purchased two of them. I had one in the office, and I had thought I had one that was a floater. Maybe Jim has that one, or since he was also sort of newer. I don't remember. I definitely bought one. So Brian, you don't have one. Having it online is really great, so especially if you have a yeah. tablet. It's easy just to get around in there. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy yeah, to read. Yeah, it's, well. it's a good document. Well written. And what it's the MACC handbook? Yeah. Is it just like tips and pointers? Oh, it's like everything. Yeah. It's the Bible. It's, it's based on the Bible. Wildlife <laughs> Protection Act. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got all kinds of um, other statutes that you can refer to. It starts with what is a commission, you know, oh, how are the okay. Conservation like Commission that. Act, oh, you know, all right. okay. um, oh. regulatory stuff, land acquisition stuff, land protection, land management. Just okay. has to show you how much we don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. federal and state. Then. No, uh, well, it might have some federal references, but it's mostly related state. to the Water okay. Protection Act because okay. it's a state agency. I mean, it's a state, it's a not, MACC is a nonprofit, but for Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Conservation Commissions, yep. so okay. it's mostly related to that. It's good. I'll never get through it. So I don't know where Jan is. Do you want to open the meeting and I'll tell you when I know about it? Um, All right. Or do you want to take up some other business and see if she should? I did get a response from her. Oh, 
response meeting. You know, it was like I reminded her yesterday. Okay. Um, maybe maybe we could just well, I think we'll need more time to do the farming and wetlands. I think if we could jump to that since we already started started talking about the MSCC. Sure. As long as you don't mind being interrupted if she shows up. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I thought it'd be a good idea if we maybe just start coming. Oh, it is. Never mind. Right. Okay, so we're going to open it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jake, come on in. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was in the building. Oh. oh. Do you have a seat right up here? This is uh, the commission and Dan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the commission. He's in interested in being on the commission. And you can move up to him. You don't yeah, have to sit all right. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll we'll open this one. The uh, Bolton Conservation Commission will hold a public Caroline meeting. Under the provisions of uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Weapons Protection Act and Riverfront Act, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a request for determination of applicability filed by Janet Johnson for the conversion of field blueberry bushes, maintenance of field edge, and removal of invasive plant species at 131 Greenville. <laughs> Why, you want to just uh, explain to everybody what it was? Carol and I sent the providers these lovely maps. I kept them because there's <laughs> here's this, this is the green road if you know where that is, and here's Vaughn Hill right here. Um, and this is my property. Here's my house. This is a common drive. It used to be, a, from what I understand, it used to be a 17-acre farm. So it still has pastures here. This is a pasture here, a pasture here, a pasture here. And there's a brook that runs through here. And yes, I don't know to put blueberries in there. So I just discussed it with Carol. She had Again, said that um, so yeah, somebody it. else had planted, had gotten permission a right. few years ago to plant vegetables, I guess, in that right. area. Yeah, actually I got in like those three five or something like that would have been like got permission to keep it mowed, which it has been. And then she, and Jen, who lives over here, used it um, and got, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was about three years ago she had, was growing organic vegetables in Jim got the permission to do organic vegetables. Is that just, oh, you said it was. Oh, um, she filed a request for determination similar to what Jan it. has done. Okay. And because at that point, it wasn't in an agricultural use, right. and she was converting you know, a field to an agricultural use. Mm -hmm. So she went through the process of requesting a okay. negative determination, which she received. Okay. Um, it's about, um, what was the square footage? like? Your square footage this of what you want to do what is What I want to do here. is 120 feet here and 40 feet across here. I do three rows, um, plant um, clover in between, white clover, in between for walkways, and then the blueberries, which actually have wood chips on them. Okay. And would you be, so cover mulch. Would you be covering the blueberries when they're fruiting with netting or something? Or? I would have to do yeah. I would have to figure that out. Yeah, because I think we were talking before that a lot of times they use the one inch netting and little birds can actually get in and get stuck. Um, so you might want to consider something like half inch -ish or something. Sort of I was actually thinking stuff. about um, portable chain link. Um, I'm putting mesh over top just because of the air and so chain link around the whole. The other thing is, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about pre human predators down there. <laughs> really? Because I can't see it. it from my house. Mm -hmm. You can but see it from the air. You can see it from the road. There's a lot of people coming. Well, I have like a lot of kids that walk up and down here. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it would be. I, it worries me a little bit. I don't know if it would be. Are the blueberries all for yourself, or do you want to sell I'd them? I'd like to sell them. Yeah. yeah. My goal is to pay part of my taxes, actually. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be wild blueberries. They're going to be cultivated. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so what about a chain link fence around? Does that mean that the passage of wildlife right. could yeah. be impeded? Because I think it could be the whole 
reason that Janet mentioned, the, the netting is so that birds don't get caught, and so... Not just deer. Right, deer, deer can't deer, deer right. mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. I'd have to keep deer out. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, actually, actually they, one yeah. thing I will do, I will start out with putting little bars of soap on there. Mm -hmm. You heard doing that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little bars of mm -hmm. soap, soap on there. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> they don't like the smell. It. And so, nor do I. Um, so they, that would, that would work, but I'm not sure how you long know, that's effective. Another thing we found and out. And I really haven't invested yeah, in birds. Both um, rabbits and voles really like blueberry plants. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a lot harder to keep out than, um, than deer. Because well, voles in particular. Okay. What do they do? They chew the tunnel. Bark. Yeah, they chew the bark and they can gurgle them. We had some mm -hmm. killed because of the gurgle. Mm -hmm. Um, so around well ours, that we're going to go individually around ours, putting half-inch hardware cloth. I think I can control that because you can you can control that with, with um, daffodils. Really? To That's what I've done. I planted daffodils around my fruit trees yeah. because mm -hmm. rodents don't like them. I'm not sure. Oh, I know they like the daffodils. I know I saw them for meeting what they do like. Oh, that's interesting. They like the bulbs, though, don't they? Don't they like but not daffodils. Yeah. Like two that's one of the reasons people put them in cages. Yeah. That some animals like bulbs, yeah. but maybe not where you are. Some animals like daffodil bulbs. They like bulbs in general. But so they, well, they don't like. They'll eat. Yeah. They'll eat tulips, tulips and crocus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but not, not the daffodils. daffodils. The daffodils. Yeah. Um, so I guess we need to talk about what sorts of things. We think have an impact or don't have an impact in terms of how she might protect a chain link fence around the whole area. Um, would it would be portable. Would we? I guess would we be able to give you a negative determination? It would be portable, so it would be. If I were to do it, it would be sections, you know, put them there. But I, yeah, I don't know. It's needed, I guess. But it would be very year round, or just when they're fruiting. Or? It, I don't. I don't. I don't think that. It was just something I was that, thinking about. You yeah. were about to ask the question if the deer would even touch them. Um, right. Uh, I don't know how much deer like blueberry plants. I know that the rabbits and wolves do. But I guess we need to know they what do. we need to know, like what your plans are, fairly exactly, <laughs> so that we can determine whether it's going to have an impact or not. Um, you know what I mean? Because if you if it, if we think it doesn't have an impact then you get a negative determination and you, you're done with us. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to have an impact, then you need to file, go through and file a notice of intent and then get in order of conditions. And basically, the more you're going to do, the more obstacles. I mean, you know what I mean? The, the more likely it is to have impact. Putting, surrounding the entire thing. I would do what you would want me to do. OK. Well, do, no, you think, do you think, think, you think, think I mean, you want to go and take a look at the site so you can get a better idea of it from more than what you can see just from land? So you have a sense in terms of migratory path? I mean, mm. it's not like she's coordinating off the whole mm. right. thing. So it's just a, it's a rectangular box area of what do you mean by chain link fence? Is it uh, is it like a mesh thing? Because I know deer like they'll try and get to something if they like it. Is it just like a one? No, I've just seen you can get you can get chain link in sections, you know, mm -hmm. so that it's portable. Like the you know, the so that's triangular. That was just an idea fence. that went through my head. Yeah. Okay. What I've been told to do by by my blueberry farming friends is to put in four by four posts mm -hmm. around here and then put up netting and. It wasn't specified what size netting. You just said netting, and I haven't even gotten that far as making it through. Mm -hmm. That's what we we have the four by four around our. It's not quite as big as your area, but we have them around our blueberries, and we don't really have any trouble with the bowls or anything getting in. But it depends on where you live, probably mm -hmm. too. You know what, what's yeah, four the attract four fencing? Uh, uh, no, the around yeah the, the posts yeah. and along oh, the bottom. Posts. Yeah, and then we have posts that come up, and then the netting's all around it, and then we just. We take the and netting off during the, the um, during the um, mm -hmm. I mean, if you time. tell me the particular size of netting, I guess. Oh, well, I, can't, I didn't even know what ours is, to be honest. It was just the comment that if, if you 
have the netting, the, the, some of the experiences is that the birds will still get in because the birds are what really is looking for. Do you have to explain which netting is? So the standard small. netting is the one inch square that, I, that yeah. I see on blueberries and like little birds like chickens can get in. I get you would just have to agree to monitor it when, when you have the netting up that you need to check every day and make sure birds aren't stuck in there because they can get stuck. It's, it's not that you couldn't use the netting. Um, I, I mean, I'm just thinking, um, so the netting would only be something you do during the fruiting time, right? When they're around, when they're about to ripen, because you want to keep animals from eating the berries. I think so, and hopefully the soap would work. You know, I came. You right. know, I was thinking about. I was just thinking about the possibility of chain links that I wouldn't have to mess with so much, but I yeah, don't. the chain links not going to keep the birds from getting in, probably. No, no. just the deer. Uh -huh. So that, that's a separate issue, and I'm thinking if there's. But if, if you want to, I'll do the soap deal and do one of the okay. netting in the summertime. If that's that's what is approved. You know what I mean? I think you're going to find doing the netting is a lot of work, though, too. Mm -hmm. That's all. I just mm -hmm. <laughs> putting it up and taking it down. Yeah. There's a product called melogonite, mm -hmm. um, which deer don't like. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's trying a, to it's a bio. Um, does, isn't there a brand name associated with it, too? I think I was talking to Lori about this it's one. It's so LGBT. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it just stinks. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like the deer don't like the smell and it's a fertilizer it's an organic fertilizer I think it comes from Detroit or someplace um, um, no, I but guess it's um, recycled sewage if I'm not mistaken and it's not acceptable for organic uh, so you know, it's okay. acceptable for organic lawns yeah <coughs> not for you uh, okay. yeah. but they don't, they don't like it the deer don't like it. That's what I've heard from people who have used it. Mm -hmm. There's also the shiny um, pie plates and the pink and shiny that goes yeah. up. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know how other people feel, but I'm feeling like if it's non-permanent fencing, you know, netting or something that you're using just when it's fruiting, and the soap to repel the deer, that seems negligible in fact to me. I mean, okay, so okay, the soap. But if you're going to put something <coughs> permanent around it, that would be. I, I would say, I would seem to feel the same too. If, if it's something non-permanent, um, I, I don't think it, would, it really affects any migrations going in that area. There's a lot of things for larger animals too, and for most of the smaller ones. Um, but to just go straight RDA, I can see if it's a non-permanent structure and it's just netting seasonally. Right. Uh, I would think I that would be a negative be, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I don't yeah. Think oh, I so she has two other. This is uh, another component ahead. to the request for determination. Um, which was that when I met with her this past summer, we were talking about just, again, maintenance of the field and the property. And so she's got some invasive plants around those edges of the property that she's been sort of maintaining when she can deal with it, right? You know, or I've been trying to, yeah. it, but, but, but it's no easy job. Man, it's a mess. So I just suggested that since, you know, she was going to be talking to you anyway, it would be best just to run that by you as well to make sure that, um, you know, if, if you had any questions or you had any advice or you wanted to condition it in any way or anything like that. So I don't know, I forget, you put in there, you had multiple rose and mm -hmm. bittersweet mm -hmm. and um, buckthorn are the major ones. So what are you doing to control them and what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've just been, I, I've been pretty much just pulling them out you know, cutting them back up around here, not so much down this field. What I've been doing down here a little bit is that is I've realized that what happens is this here is that area there mm -hmm. is all pretty much invasives and down here all that is invasives. This this up here is an is a nice red pine, but this <coughs> down in here. I think it all, at one time it was this is a hillside here. I think and, and at one time this was fenced but over time, that it's just become overgrown. And it's just all um, so honeysuckle. That's the other one. Honeysuckle, buck, um, buckthorn, multiflower rose, and bittersweet. And um, that's it's the same. Right? That's what this is here. There's a lot of it in here. There's a lot of it here. And what I've been trying to do is. I notice that when a tree or something falls down here, then then the tractor goes. You know, when the, when the mowing guy comes in, he goes around it, right? Instead of instead of keeping that line straight, you know, it, 
it go, falls into the field a little bit, right? So you lose your field. So he falls, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I was in New Hampshire for five years, and I wasn't able to keep it on top of it, and and all this area grew. All this area of invasives grew by like ten feet. Wow, it's really hard to keep it. Mm -hmm. And I, whenever I say to somebody, "How do you get rid of them?" They say, "Have the equipment." <laughs> yeah. Right. So, are you wanting to do that? I mean, I guess that's what I'm wondering. No. Are you are, are you no. going to continue just wanting to continue the way you just have been manually mm -hmm. controlling yeah. it? To How do you system. dispose of everything? I just cut it. Yeah. So you don't you know try to get the berries or anything. Collect it. Collect the. No, I try to get them before the berries are. So you try to do it before yeah. it's buried. Yeah. Yeah. Like you've got different stuff, so multiflora rose, different than the bittersweet, the bittersweet, you know. And like now you, it's hard, you want to capture the berries. Yeah. yeah. Better 30 feet up. <laughs> well those, I mean, then you just, those are going to be new seedlings you're going to have to pull, probably, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but, and, and you don't see them until this time of year. It's like, I can go through there and cut a million of those things down, and then, yeah. and then somebody yeah. says, Look at that bittersweet up there. So you're talking about pretty much mechanical methods, right, that you're doing. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing it. Do you ever burn, yeah. it's all hand burn stuff at all? Or? Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're not pulling them when they're buried, I mean, if you're just pulling them before, you're, before they're buried. I'm trying to get them before them, but once in a while I see it goes to fruit and I cut it down as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I haul stuff, you know, mostly where I think up here, I haul stuff out in the middle of this field here and figure the berries are going to fall here and get plowed. So oh, I see. Mm -hmm. oh, good. That, I don't know if that helps or not. Well, I mean, I, probably the, the biggest thing is that the birds eat the berries and they distribute them out to the air. So it is good to get, get rid of them before they fruit. But, I mean, if it's after they fruit, it's, it's better to remove it than to leave it, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're, so you're doing it mechanically, <coughs> sort of low level, low impact, and you're not asking to do anything different. I don't really see any uh, yeah, issue in here. Mm -hmm. okay. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I think it's great. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I, I'm, sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. I'm going to have to figure out how to get water down there. I'm thinking about putting a barrel up here and getting water off this roof. Yeah. But I'm quite trying to get out So I might ask too. Can, do I have time to ask another just a general question? I don't know exactly what the rules are, and and somebody has asked me if he can bring his chicken tractor <coughs> and leave it in this field up here. And possibly down down here. Um, he also has goats. Sometimes would it be all right to fence and keep goats there, which would be great because the goats actually he he didn't have his goats here up up in this area one day, and they ate an enormous amount of that invasive stuff, the poison ivy. They just really wonderful. Oh, cleared out whole and two fruit trees. But it's <laughs> not so wonderful, but um, he just brings them into graves that are not. He doesn't house them there. Mm -hmm. He just bought them. Right. Well, he was going to try and leave them there for a while, and they, they got this. So, so neither of those could take their chicken. Do I have to? Do I need well, to get creating the pasture? That could be a, just a different thing because all the fields. I mean, in the lower part well, looks jurisdictional. Exactly the stuff up above may not be jurisdictional. What is wetlands on? Well, the green blob is pretty much the edge of the wetland, and then oh, and then we have a hundred feet, which would be, and and, and that's just a state, um, like you know, map that shows where it is. So it's not field delineated. So that would be. So that would be. But those are already pastures. Right. Right. So you're talking about fencing them and making them into more like a paddock. Is my question really? Oh, you know, um, like we have oh, on the other. I thought she was saying she was already. They were already coming, so there is no fence. Are, are you talking about this? Water? I'm not sure if fencing. that's even, that's beyond 100 feet here. If it's beyond 100 feet, then we don't have jurisdiction. Okay. But here, if you not have to use that, the be does. So yeah. I have to come, I if come back fence, and ask yeah. if, it, if he wants to use that. Do I have to do that? Well, if you were going to fence it, right? If she's 
Well, it's, a, it's just a field that she mows. It's not in agricultural use right. now. So if you're going to start bringing animals in and creating a paddock, I think we need to be consistent in what we're looking at, right? I guess I'm not sure that it would be creating a paddock if there's no fencing. I mean, there's but no she said she was thinking no. of doing fencing. Oh, oh right. If there are animals. Oh, okay. Paddock. I didn't know that. Yeah, right. we would need to. So, okay. So I do need to come back for that. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. There's there's a, just the one on the bottom, but not the one on the top. Well, I told him I was pretty sure he could use this up here, but that was not that was not within the hundred feet. Within the hundred feet, but um, I wasn't sure about this. So. Okay, he he was willing to clear out some of some basic stuff. So, I mean, we've talked about using goats to do that. So I guess if he was going to, like, you know, shepherd them and move them around and, you know, work your edge of your field, you know, and wasn't going to have a permanent fence or something, and, I mean, whatever you decide you're going to try to do, you know, you'd probably need to bring it back. But we have talked about that before, of having them, you know, use, like, a portable fence to kind of have them eat that invasive area out, you know, and then and move them, you know, to the next yeah. invasive area. Yeah. And we wanted to sort of see how that's worked in other places, you know, and we haven't been able to do it ourselves yet. So, um, I mean, it might be something that would be a good test to see how it worked. But again, if it was going to be more of a permanent paddock area or, you know, keeping the animals and growing between chickens and then sheep and then, you know, goats yeah. or whatever, then I think you need to look at that because that's it's right. not in an agriculture. Right. 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 I, I thought she was saying without yeah, because no. I was thinking the chicken tractor, they're already enclosed, right? You don't need additional fence. Right, they're in the, right. They're in the, right. And, and the goats, you can yeah. tether them. Yeah, and they're exactly. not fenced either. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want to tether them because he has seen goats oh, get stuck. choke themselves. Oh. Get, stuck. get stuck in. So he doesn't want to do that either. So I don't know. He'd have to, you know, the last time I talked to him, he, his idea was to, you know, be able to put them in my barn. And so yeah so if you want to do that then we could we can do another either request or notice okay. depends on the extent of it probably okay. we can talk okay. about that okay thank so you then. so much well then i'm done <laughs> oh everybody okay mm -hmm. yeah okay okay yeah. so, so i still have to vote on it yeah. <laughs> oh it's okay. to do the formality <laughs> so i'd like to make a motion that we hope i heard the word this correctly issue a negative determination um for um, 131, 131 Green Road, um, based on uh, the fact that there seems seems like there would be no impact um, on planting blueberries and protecting with non-permanent barriers. Second. Second. Well, so can I just add, add yeah, to it? So are you saying a negative three determination? So, so the negative three is that work within the buffer zone, okay. will not air, alter an area subject to protection. Mm -hmm. And oh. then also, um, and then under the Bible, the same thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'd like to make a motion that we make a negative three determination under both the bylaw and um, for 131 Green Road. Second. Um, David? Aye. Oh. All right, so Chan, I will um, have them sign this and then email you the paperwork. That's fine. Okay. Did, you say, did you say you would mail it? I can mail it to you. I, can, I said I can mail it to you or you can come pick it up. Either way. Okay. So you guys need to sign this sheet. I lost my paper from so okay. So all set? Okay. Thank you, Reverend. Thanks for watching out for the town. Keep the barriers, keep electing and Yes. 
the Volta Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting under the provisions of Mass General Law 131, Section 40, and under the Volta Wetland Law, Chapter 233, to consider a request for determination of applicability, applicability filed by Volta Parks and Recreation Commission for the restoring and improving electrical utilities at Pond Park and Skating Pond on Main Street. Introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Steve Schneider. I'm the newly minted chair of the Parks and Rec uh, Commission. And uh, back in April, uh, the uh, the tree warden had to do some emergency tree removal. There were some hazardous uh, sugar maples that needed to be removed uh, in the park. And in the process of removing those, they knocked out the uh, pole that held the electrical box that provided us with electricity for the park. Um, it was an overhead line. They hit the overhead line and, uh, and took down the pole. So um, after a lot of noise, I guess, um, it was determined that uh, parks would be the ones to spearhead getting the electricity back in the park. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with what we do in terms of lighting. They may not though. be. That's no, okay. I mean, do you, does everybody know what we're talking about? Pond Park? It's right in front of the school. Right, so yeah. right over there. Yeah. Um, okay. just if you want. So we light the... We light the location the, map. Um, I can just oh, that. great. That's perfect. It's better than mine. Uh, so let's see. Where are we? Main Street. There's Houghton. So right here, Pond Park. And this area here, uh, the lighter shaded area, is the, I guess, do we call that an area subject to flooding? Um, I believe we have. Okay. Um, this is the area that's typically uh, dry during the uh, summer months, and then in the cold months, we divert water, flood this area for a skating area. There is a wetland right sort of where this, where this darker area is here is near the school. Um, the electricity, so what we do is we use the electricity to decorate the tree. There's a, a, a spruce there, a small spruce that we decorate for the holidays. There's a small bridge that goes over the spillway uh, that will light up and several benches and, and whatnot to make it more festive. Right now, you'll go over there and you'll see that we put a lot of uh, different pumpkins and squashes yeah, and, and whatnot. We had the jack-o'-lanterns out there. It was a lot of fun this year. Um, so we may do without the electricity, but we want to put it back. Um, and so I've met with an electrician, met with the UPW, with uh, the tree ward and several other people. We have a plan. Um, and so uh, the, the request for determination really um, encompasses uh, three different priorities for this for, for this electricity. One is to get the, the pole and the service back. Um, the second priority would be to uh, light up an existing set of plugs that is over by a larger spruce that used to be the holiday tree but got too big for, for decorating. Um, and that has been disconnected, I, I gather, for some time. The third priority would be to um, to trench uh, trench over to what currently is the holiday tree and the bridge, and put in underground conduit, and put in plugs right at the base of those areas because what we do currently is run a lot of extension cords, and we had a lot of arcing last year, and it's just. It's not an ideal situation to have those those courts. Um, before the service went down, our our priority was to get those those plugs in. Um, obviously, now the top priority is to get the uh, the, the service back in. This is a, a map that that Carol provided me with. This is the pond here, um, and. This is a, a really horrible drawing. I apologize, but it was from the um, Force Main. Force Main, yeah, yeah, or the water line. Yeah, Force Main. It was the Force uh, Force Force Sewer Main yeah. project. Right. Um, and so, where the red mark is is approximately where the pole was. Um, and so, what's there now is there's you know what's left of the pole in the ground flush. 
um, along with a grounding rod and a, a couple of uh, conduits poking up. Um, where we're proposing to put the new pole is, I guess, further south of the lo that location. Right now, it's currently sort of in the middle where it's a bit of an eyesore. So we want to pull it back toward the road. Um, and the I can't remember if in the RDA that I filled out, I put in that we were trying to put in an underground connection. Um, if I did, we want to change that. Um, digging a small trench to an adjacent utility pole. Right. So we, we're no longer going to do that because it's cost prohibitive. Um, the electrical company will, will do an overhead <coughs> connection for us for essentially free. Um, for underground, believe it or not, it's $100 a foot. Um, and it, that's, that's a considerable cost. And we're already grappling over who's paying for what and how it's getting paid for. So um, this would mean that there's a, there's a utility pole right about here um, that we would, and we would connect this overhead. Uh, what was also on the pole that, that uh, had the, uh, the box on it was uh, a floodlight for night skating. So we would, we used to light it up uh, for night skating. We're proposing to put that light back. Um, we, we'd like to uh, replace it with an LED light instead of the, the old uh, metal halide light that was there uh, before. So the priority one would be to get the pole in the ground and then uh, do an overhead connection to the existing pole. Then what we'd like to do is trench over to the uh, former site and connect with the electricity that would light up the plugs that are right over here by that big spruce. So this, this conduit is already in the ground. There's no need to do any trenching. The third priority would be to trench over to, this is the tree, and then this is the bridge over here, which would obviously have you know, in terms of the project, likely, you know, be viewed as the most impact. Yeah, because the trench everything. Where is the pond again? Sorry. Yeah, on the white <coughs> map, on the white map it's I know yeah. it's it's not it's not great, but it's it's right over here. That's the size of it. About? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of resources there, really. There's so it's Great Brook that flows under 117 and it ponds because there's an old dam um, or I guess they call it the dam that's where they divert the water to do the flooding so you've got some riverfront area that extends doesn't some of the riverfront extend? that's what I thought yeah so, on that so this um, this here is your 100 foot riverfront line and this that's faded is the 200 so pretty much all the work you're talking about is yeah. within the river project. It's all within the river. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a vegetated wetland around the, the back of the mm -hmm. pond, a back of the area that they flood. So there's it's bordering it's vegetated it's wetland and yes. land surface it's flooding. And, then it goes back. and is it also priority habitat? Um, no, was that out? I didn't look at that again. It's the one thing. The, yeah. Some of the school, <laughs> the wetland behind the school <laughs> is, but no, no. Bit there. This, this is outside. So what, you, what is the way, how do they put the pole in? Did they just, are they going to leave the other one there? Or are they, do they get out? There's no, there's no plan to, since it's, it's, it's pretty rotten. So it's, it's going back into the earth, um, you know, as we speak. Uh, the, the idea would be to auger out a hole. I've never actually seen a pole go into the ground. I've just seen the equipment that they use. Um, so it would mean augering out, um, you know, uh, I don't know how deep a pole goes. I'm assuming at least four feet, if not deeper. Um, pole goes in. The trench, I believe the code for depth, there's no code for width, but the code for depth is, I believe, uh, for electrical, 18 inches. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to go at least 18 inches down. And so, and with, is that, so the trench is not, that was your third priority, right? So are you, you're waiting to, are you doing that in 2015 then? Are you looking to do that like in fiscal 2015? Fiscal, we're not, no. I, I, think, I think right now because there's so much, honestly, so we're pursuing, this was obviously the, 
you know, the fault of the tree company. We're pursuing insurance to pay for the um, uh, the replacement. If not, if that doesn't go through, which is a possibility it won't, um, then we're going to have to pay, we being parks are going to have to pay for that. So we just may have to go, you know, the, the idea is let's try before the ground freezes, let's try and get the pole and the service in and then do do it the old-fashioned way with, with extension cords for this year and then for next fiscal year um, put together pull together the money to to do the electrical enhancement yeah I was mostly just wondering about the time of the year so yeah you know if it wasn't going to be this winter you know and stabilizing the area yeah it definitely it, it, it you know it would be nice if we could um, you know while we're doing this work trench over to the um, the the old spot just so we could what what would go in here I believe is uh, an underground box where you like a junction box where you would make your connections so what we could do this year possibly is trench over to the site clean this up get rid of the things that are sticking up into the air um, which include two conduits uh, and a ground bar um, and connect this electricity here and then and then just you know stub off you know and, and put a put a, a couple of conduits I'm not entirely sure if they have to put one or two pipes in while you have the ground open it's best to put a couple in um, and that way we could just close this up and then worry about doing this aspect of it for the next fiscal year and can I just ask you, do you know that the um, utility company is okay with putting the pole where you want to move it at this point? The utility, it's, it's, it's actually, it'll be a private pole. So one thing that I looked into, because there was a pole here, is can we just hang our, hang our box and our light on that pole? And the utility company basically says, you know, um, so <coughs> we, the t this would be a town pole, and we would own it, just like we own this pole here. And the you know so the utility company doesn't really care. They won't dictate about that no. location. Then. Okay. No. If they pay for it, we we yeah, have them dictate whatever they, they, they wanted to, but that's mm -hmm. just not going to happen. So I guess the only thing to me, I think, is it's not a lot of groundwork. Yeah. You know, I don't. I mean, I haven't watched them put a pole in either, but it's sort of. I think the the bigger thing is really just the trenching to get over to the tree and the and the bridge. I mean, the bridge is where the stream flows. You know, so um, I don't know whether you know it's pretty flat. I don't know whether you'd want some straw wattles or whether you think there's any need to define the area in some way. I don't, again, do you think? <laughs> Well, I'm just throwing it up for thought. Um, I'm just trying to, and Steve, you you might have an opinion about that too. Whether there's anything needed that way. Um, I mean, if it's 18 inches, it's not very big. It's just who, who's going to stabilize it? Is that Park and Rec going to stabilize it? Yeah, I, it, you know, we'd work with DPW to to get uh, get it seated. Um, you know, one thing that I would I would suggest, and I, I, you know, I'd like to work with the electrician. So the electrician is a, is a, a local electrician in town. He's a firefighter. Um, and, you know, one thought that I had, and Carol and I had, had walked the site, um, <coughs> is, is using a ditch witch rather than using, you know, say a mini excavator. Um, the trees in Palm Park are not doing all that well. They're, they're really coming coming of age and, and they're starting to fall apart. But we still have a few where the you know they're in good health, they're in good shape, and we wanna we wanna preserve the, the root systems of those of those trees. And then there are some where, you know, you can see there's a big there's a big trunk that's holding up a light pole right now that we're working on. But so I drew a straight line, but what I might wanna suggest is that we we sort of work with the, the root systems of, of existing healthy trees and try to avoid them as much as possible. We're gonna do some root damage if we're, if we're doing some trenching. Um, but I think that it would be, it would behoove us to, to try and avoid root systems. So I think, that, I think that the trenching could more or less be done on the, 
I'm going to call it a field. I know it's not a field, but on the field side rather than close to the pond. Um, and the land does have a tendency to slope this way. So in terms of, you know, I mean, I think that, I think that if we use a ditch which we can, we can, you know, still get the trench rather deep, um, but avoid making it really wide. Um, and so making sort of a nice clean cut into the earth and, and the ditch which will just sort of make the, the allow the, the soil to flow up to the edges. Um, and so that way we could just... How wide is it with a ditch? How wide is it? It's as wide as the cut, really. So, you know, I mean, I you're not going to get, you're not going to get too much, you know, the teeth, the teeth go about, you know, this much, and then just the, the force of, of moving the soil will widen that slightly. Um, but it's a lot smaller than the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. It is, and it's less equipment driving all yeah. the root systems, no. and you know, so it, it's it's a it's a it's a less invasive way of being invasive. <laughs> Do you, are there plans um, for how this will be used, like going to the future, or just wondering, like within five years, mm -hmm. you know, would you be coming back for something else? I mean, is it going to remain like this? Because I noticed you said one light pole. Um, and I'm wondering how much illumination is here, and if at some point you might say, oh, well, we need more lights, or we, we want um, to rent out skates, or um, is there any plan for the, the future? Do it's highly know? unlikely that small, we add so. more lights. It is yeah. small, and it's also, I mean, I'm, I'm the one that's currently volunteering to, to flood the thing, and mm -hmm. it, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> and uh, it all depends on <coughs> you know, weather conditions and, and whatnot. You know, um, Carol and and myself met over there with Jack Holbrook, and well, we met. I met virtually. I was yes, on the phone. Nice. Yeah, um, but then later on, I did meet with Jack over there. Um, to answer your question, I think that you know, just looking at Pond Park in general, it's in it's in a state of disrepair, mm -hmm. uh, and in a number of different. Uh, Aspect. So you look at the pond itself, and it's full of silt. I mean, it's it's just full of, of debris. It's, it looks like it's going through succession, um, when all it's doing is it's just taking all the debris that's coming down from the from the storm drains and dumping it there. Um, so it needs to be it needs to be cleaned out. And I know that the the fire department has has been eyeballing it for a, a dry hydrant. And that's what I met, wound up meeting up with with Jack Holbrook to talk about. Um, the 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 stonework, um, both on the on the outer edge of the pond out here, it, and the spillway or the dam, is is falling apart and it's dangerous. And I know that Martha Remington from the Historical Commission, said Society, um, is is interested in in pursuing grant money to restore all of that, which we think is, is, is great. Um, the stonework that sort of holds up 117 is not looking all that swell. Um, and it's really something, you know, it looks like it's dry laid stone, which is, you know. And if you go in and start cleaning the pond and disturbing that, you, you, you risk shifting that. So I, I'm, uh, now that Halloween's over, we I can focus on, on my plan is to, to meet up with Harold Brown and DPW and have him take a look at it and and the, the point being is taking a look at Pond Park as a, as a capital project a, a whole and not just sort of looking at each one of these um, individual you know, projects as, as individual projects but sort of looking at it as as one big um, capital project mm -hmm. And of course, you know that kind of work will will involve notice of intent and, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. Um, but you know, our our goal right now, you know, and in terms of the future of of, of this, you know, there is an an existing O and M plan, or an almost done O and M plan. No, the, well, there was a the, so there was a notice of intent filed for maintenance of Pond Park, yeah. and they, there was an O and M plan, and then. After a year or so of using that plan, there was some further discussion and some thoughts to amend it. 
and the amendment process started with the amended hearing and we started to review it but we wanted some modifications made to it and then the modifications never happened so then it's never been amended right but so the, the there's still the, the order conditions and still a plan for um, doing the regular <coughs> mowing that occurs and um, I think there was, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember all the things that were in it, to be honest, but mainly it was mowing, the mowing, there was, there was, there was vegetation in, management. Invasive, invasive plants, I think yeah, there was some exactly. of that. And so, so um, after I get past this hot mess, um, my plan over the winter uh, is to, to come in and, and address the, the, the O&M plan with you folks and, and get that, get all those loose ends mm -hmm. ends tied up. So um, that was the long answer to your question but um, no I think our, our immediate plan is is just to you know have the have the pole in there's always been talk about you know wouldn't it be nice to have a little gazebo in the middle frankly we have so much to focus on up here with the existing infrastructure that's that's in need of repair that um, that's so far down the road that I can't even see it So I think some of the, so the, it, this is a little different in that it's not just buffer zone, so it's within the resource area. Mm -hmm. So you just would have to determine whether you think that there's any um, need for any further notice of intent with it. It seems pretty minor. It was somewhat related. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the poll work anyway was related yeah. to the storm damage that occurred you know, before. Mm -hmm. the, um, the trenching is temporary. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's pretty mm -hmm. minor. I see it as having mm -hmm. no issue. Yeah, same here. So I think you'd be looking at a negative two and a negative three. Negative so, two. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to get you the page to sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that we issue a negative two and a negative three determination um, for Parks and Rec, uh, Fawn Park on Main Street. Uh, because the work described in the request is in, the, in the, is within an area subject to protection under the Wetlands Protection Act, but will not remove dredge, fill, or alter the area. Therefore, it does require a filing. And also, um, on number three, the work described is within the buffer zone, as defined in the regulations, but will not alter the area subject to protection under the Act. Therefore, it doesn't require a filing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Steve, do you want me to just put this in the mailbox? Please. Okay. That would be fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Is the content going to open and close? What? Um, yeah. I'm, sorry. I'm not going to make it to the polls, am I? Oh no. That's <laughs> all right. Another time. Um, so Condine has, um, there, no one's going to come for Condine tonight. They, we did receive on Monday um, the um, oh, response the from our peer review yeah. consultant. So did I send that out yet? Probably not. I, I just got it yesterday. So. Okay, so I received a response from um, Horsley and Whitten. And they uh, now find that um, everything, the responses have all been um, satisfactory and that they meet the stormwater standards. So um, what I t suggested to Mark Dibb, the consultant who was here at the last meeting, was that um, we could look through the, pa I would look through the packet again and start to see formulating and order conditions. And if I had any questions, I would call him just to see if there's anything that we hadn't answered, we can bring it up at the next, continue it to the next meeting on November 18th. Um, and if you guys have the same thing for you, if you either have questions that you think need to be answered before we can issue the order, or that you want things that you're going to want me to draft into it, you know, we'll I'll start to work on that. And hopefully, get it out to you before the 18th, okay. and then um, again he can come and if there's questions. So we're leaving it open basically, okay. so that we can draft the order. Okay. So we want to continue it through a certain time. So we'll see. 
Well, do they, uh, will they be coming in? Or are we yes, they, no, well, the, they may come in because we may have <coughs> questions. Okay. So, because okay. I haven't, we did, other than the presentation last me meeting, I mean, this started in April, so mm -hmm. I really haven't sat down to look at anything beyond the stormwater because mm -hmm. we were kind of on hold for a while with that. Mm -hmm. Now, the planning board is still meeting with them. They still have a meeting, I believe, maybe tomorrow night. Um, however, um, when I spoke with the town planner, she didn't think that the things that they were working out were going to have any impact necessarily on the commission's comment or order. The design review committee is still meeting. Um, I don't think they were meeting until November 10th. So they still are getting comments together for the planning board. So they need that report before the planning board be able to close it. But I'll have some time to check with them on that still. So our next meeting is uh, two weeks, uh, November 18th. And we don't have anything new scheduled, so they could come in at 7. Okay. That's going to be December 2nd. Oh, okay. sorry. Both of those are December 2nd. Both of what? Um, the ones on the Rockfield. back of your agenda, um, Rockfield and DBW. Oh, okay. So McBreen, um, they um, weren't able to get me the report that um, is required for us to consider issuing their um, surety, release. surety release for the first year for the planting. And um, they just asked me if we could just hold that off until the next meeting. So mm -hmm. I'll just keep that on the agenda. Sounds good. Okay. And Newman, 162 North Road. Um, request for certificate of compliance. Right. So, okay. I was just going to say, this was the house where um, they had an order of conditions several years ago to put up a fence, but then they never moved into the house and never put up a fence. And had well, the, the, the moving in was my speculation that they may not have moved in. Okay. But, um, right, so the order of conditions for it was for an addition and a fence, and it was all within the riverfront area, the entire lot. And I don't know if any of you were on the commission at the time. Let me just see. Was, is this that <coughs> really messed up lot that's completely, no. I'm trying to think if I've come across it before. Uh, let me just take a look at who signed like this for a second. Um, I don't know what you mean by messed up. No, it was really messed yeah, up. Yeah, there's, there's that one lot that's like completely <laughs> surrounded by wetland on like well, three sides. I've been here for more than three years, really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's yeah. see. Maria yeah, has signed it. Gloria signed it. Maybe Kevin and So let me just show you the, the house plan. Here, it's like wetland, 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 wetland driveway. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Good work. Okay. Um, so the plan that was approved in the order of missions. has a lot of well, actually. So there's North Road and the driveway into the existing house. And um, you've got a, a perennial stream shown here, with associated boarding vegetative wetland. There's a stone wall that kind of runs along some of it, and then the yard sort of drops off. They ha don't have much yard, really. This just a little bit of around the back side of the garage. Um, if you can see underneath the shaded area, there was kind of an L shaped. That was mm -hmm. an existing building, and like a screened porch, if I remember, like a full mm -hmm. screen, like a year-round screen porch. And they wanted to bump it out a little bit through here and a little bit on this end, and um, and sort of square it off. And then they had originally proposed a fence that came <coughs> kind of all along, you know, a, a large portion of the uh, backyard that was open. And the commission at the time was um, didn't really want to have um, a stockade fence that clo enclosing that much of the property. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, anyway, it got sh sort of shut down to about this amount. Well, so that I had sent letters out in Febru uh, February this past um, winter um, to, to people who had outstanding orders of conditions. I hadn't really ever heard anything back from them. I never even really got, I, had, I gave the order of conditions to the um, contractor to record because 
I never had any communication with the owners. Mm -hmm. They didn't come to the meetings. It was all done through the consultant. Anyway, long so I don't know if they ever lived there or not, but they they'd never built the fence. So the as built um, that I received, uh, oh, and they're trying to sell the property. So I, I didn't get a response from my letter saying you know you've got an outstanding order, which is essentially a violation. But um, now that they want to sell the property, they're trying to close out the plant. So you can see that they just show on the as built that they bumped out mm -hmm. that area, and they do show just steps coming down off the back. They didn't do any of the fencing. So I went out last week, uh, no, yesterday, sorry, and um, everything was fine. You know, okay. So I know none of you were here, but I would make a recommendation to issue the Certificate of Compliance to close this project out. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Make a motion to issue the Certificate of Compliance to Amendment 162. Can you actually do I mean, if it's just three so um, yeah. Andy and Alan um, I wasn't actually positive if you were coming tonight to be honest but because um, I didn't get a response I knew you wanted to be on for the surety but I didn't know for sure whether you were coming anyway we don't have a quorum right now so I can update everybody and I can talk about a few things but we can't deliberate and make any decisions tonight um, so, uh, yes, she did. She's been recusing herself for this for um, a few weeks or a month. Or she has recused herself. Just a little. I don't know. That was my question. Um, I'm just wondering if that wasn't clear. Yes, she hasn't sat in on this on this I project for a while. She wasn't around. What is there any particular reason? Well, I think she's just not comfortable being the chair or on the commission talking about this project. She's had difficulty with it and doesn't feel comfortable what do you need participating. For? How many people are on the, on the board now? There's seven members on the board. Only three voting members are here. Oh. Dan's interested in being on the commission and Karen's an associate member. So right. it's different. We can't switch associate members in like some boards can. Right. Uh, Maria and Jim, I didn't know Jim was not going to be able to make it tonight. Right. And Maria, I did know, but um, I didn't know in time right. uh, as well. Um, but some of the things that I had wanted to at least update you on and, and talk about, um, again, without deliberating on it, is that is, I think, as you know, actually, I can't remember. Last time, we spent a long time talking with you guys, but they did finish the all the grading. <coughs> all the stabilizing, all the planting on the road C crossing. So all of that's been kind of put to bed and it held up well, I don't know this weekend, how it, did it hold up well? Held up really well the last time. Um, had done a, I did a site visit last Tuesday, you know, everything looked good, that was after the first big storm. Then um, in the restoration area associated with the enforcement order, um, the plantings were put in. I think when we did the site visit, you weren't sure about the seeding. No, it's not. Yeah, the seeding. And then yeah, late after that, I thought about, what about the sphagnum moss? Because I don't remember yeah. that, that was put in. Okay, so that was, the sphagnum moss was something that I had, had understood to be really important for um, the marbled salamander. 
And so wanted to make sure that uh, that area really kind of had some continuity with with the moss since that, that was something that they like to use. Um, so other than the seeding, it's fine, but it's fairly stable anyway. It's not it's not an area that um, it's got a lot of um, leaf litter now that's been coming down. It's, and it was seeded with winter rye. It just oh, it was. It okay. was seeded with the. It just didn't have the log mix. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know if there was any seating. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that so that's I, even I better. Is that coming up now? Well, I didn't check that area, but I did check around the crossing, mm -hmm. and that's come up really well. So is it? Oh, that's yeah. good. So it's even <coughs> through the jute netting and through the straw and everything. So we have a site visit there tomorrow. So I'll, yeah. I'll take another look at that. Um, so I think so um so then i think the three things that we are looking to still do um and again we can't decide it tonight but they gave they gave us a plan to remove the retaining wall around one of the detention basins and i'd have to pull up my notes to tell you which one it was but um did I, did you remember seeing that or did i give that to you does that ring a bell with you when i know I a, a couple of meetings ago yeah, when andy was here um, we were talking about it, but we didn't have the plan, I don't think, at that time. And since then, um, the engineers provided us with a plan. And what we, talk, what we looked at in the field last week when we were there was that um, the fill, uh, the grading, so the, the toe of the slope will be no closer than the retaining was, was going to be. And they are pulling it back. Um, and I'll probably, I don't know if you worked on that or not this past week, but we'll see. They did have that engineer, like the elevations were all marked out in the field so that they could pull that back. But that was all a very tight clay material. Um, we talked about it when I was there in the field as well. Um, even with the loam, it wasn't anticipated that there'd be erosion really from it. Andy, I'm trying to remember, you know, you, you were gonna, they were gonna jute net that as well. So you're gonna, the, um, the detention basin over near Road C, did you do any work on that this week? I know we'll look at it tomorrow. It'll be done by the end of the week. They, oh, yeah. have, they have them. Tomorrow they're going to just reshape that area that has to be pulled over to the left a little. And then uh, as soon as they do that, go the walls and yeah. do the plantings. The plants are there. Yeah. And seed it and put the mesh on. Yeah. So, um, so we need, you need to just, I mean, I know we discussed it, and I think the intent, or I mean, I think I got the impression that people were wanted to see the plan, but that the idea of removing the wall, if it wasn't going to have any more impact, would be okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we, have, we still have to vote that, I think, as it was a mod sure. minor modification. I thought they voted, but maybe I'm wrong, but I thought they voted to give you the ability to review the plan. Uh, because we did talk about the slope. But Do you remember that? It might be correct. Oh, I, I, I remember the discussion of it and trying to figure out if it was going to have an impact. And I wonder if it was something we would say to say. Because I know you we were waiting to get the plans in. The final plan. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. I guess I thought it was coming back yeah. to them, but I'm not positive whether looking at the minutes at the moment. I think the question. I remember the conversation being there was going to be a lot of rain, and we weren't sure if it was even going to work, and then. <clears throat> you would look at it at that time, but you weren't feeling comfortable making that decision? Oh, um, not on the retaining wall. Okay. Uh, not on that one. Oh, we were so maybe that on road A. a. Okay. Yeah. So then, then that's sort of the third thing. Well, Andy, right. Andy's also looking to get the surety released. Um, so for, he's, the way, and I don't know if you guys are all that familiar. We haven't really gotten to the point, so I'll just give you an update on it. But the, when the project was permitted, um, he put together a um, schedule for each of the phases and each of the and the work that would be included in the phases and the things that were pertinent to the conservation commission, whether it was aura planting um, or road work or drainage work and so forth. And within the scope of those things, he also had releases. So he had certain mm -hmm. columns for when he would have to put the money up and when money could be released. And one of the columns is that prior to paving. Like, I forget what the word is exactly, but pretty immediately prior to paving, which he's trying to get to within the next couple of weeks, you know, we could release a certain amount of money. So, um, the, let me see, the amount, that, and I might as well just. I actually have a, if, if we could take five minutes and go through it, that'd be great. Because I did a presentation, Yeah, we can, if, if you guys have a few minutes, I'd 
What the heck? Um, okay, well, let me yeah. just finish just my thought on the other the other thing. So the other thing is on road A. So was your presentation going to include road A? Okay. So road A, I don't really actually know where we are completely with that because the way we left it at the last meeting was that if um, myself and another commission member were comfortable approving the plan, then within 48 hours they would commence getting that work done. Mm -hmm. And after that meeting, I met with um, Brandon and Jim and Andy in the field, and you know we, we mean. Jim and Brandon and I felt as though we needed to have more detail on the plan, both from the comments that people were asking about at the meeting and then looking at it in the field. We wanted to have something that we could make sure was going to function and we understood how it was going to function and that everyone was okay with it. So Brandon had kind of said that, um, you know, it, it was sort of a, more of a sketch plan to, to provide some, you know, proposal to the commission and that he would have his staff go and get some of the field information and put it together with more details on the plan. So he did that, submitted that to me, and also distributed at my request to the town's consulting engineer, Fred Hamway, and to Brent Powers, who's the um, natural heritage and endangered species analyst, who's sort of, I think he's kind of the, you know, they must assign him to certain projects, so he's, he's the person, the go-to person there. So I did get some comments or questions back from Fred, and he submitted them, I believe, directly to Brandon, but I'm not, I have to look at the email on that one. And then I did, yesterday I got some comments back from Brent, and let me just see if I can tell if they went directly to them. They did, uh, Brent went to you and Brandon. Okay. So anyway, those, those questions will need to be answered before we can formalize or decide on, on that work. And, um, you know, I think, you know, just my offhand feeling is that, um, well, I guess I need to have the answers, you know, before, but I'm not as concerned right now about the time of year of doing the work if it gets approved, because it's not, um, it, it's fairly stable ground everywhere around it, because they've been driving over it and through it and so forth, but I am, um, I am concerned that it might be something we need to have some conditions on. Like even like one of the questions that Brent had asked was, you know, when will it come out or how temporary is it and things like that. So there may be some things that we'll want to have some agreement on. So um, anyway, that's I guess my. I did see it my that big rainstorm and the water did go the way it is. Yeah. So I, I, some of the I've heard some different comments about like the groundwater. I mean the streams right now. Like some people have said, you know, I've seen the stream flowing after this dry period. I mean it's really been dry for like three months, pretty much. And then other people have said it soaked into the ground. Like, the stream never even flowed. You know, so there was some place like you've got a lot of ledge. So in that right. case, you know, it's probably flowing. Mm -hmm. And then some other places we were talking about at the town center. <coughs> Um, that this it, that it just probably had so much of an area that <clears throat> the water coming off of the hill there didn't um, actually really didn't make it into the stream. It was still mm -hmm. sucking into the ground. So we were a few inches down. We were like five inches down going into last month. Yeah, I know, I but I, I was still surprised. I thought we'd have more flooding. Yeah. So um, do you want to let him show you what he has? I mean, again, he can't really deliberate on it. Yeah. He can't take any action. But at least he doesn't have to do it mm -hmm. a second time. Well, so, yes, yeah. like have gained some knowledge if there's something to come back with additional information. Or something. And so this is just about um, sort of getting the, the paving stuff done? Is that it's for the bond. Oh, it's for the, so the, for for the bond. bond. We were going to talk about it at the last meeting, but we didn't. Yeah, we, we, we ran pretty it. late. So yeah. let's just take a quick look at the agenda then. Um, so we have the custodial <coughs> farming, the hydro. <coughs> How long do you think it'll take? Like 10 minutes? If we at least two, might be ten minutes. So do you, I guess my only question would be: Do you feel like since we would, you know, we'll need Maria That's or Jim question, or yeah. somebody else here um, for the next meeting to release it, whether it would be worth saving it for the next time? Could they watch it? If Maria or Jim watched it. Is it slides like a PowerPoint? No, it's a. <coughs> but if they watch the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would they be okay yes, that's to vote? true. 
I, I think we can yeah. send out copies. It'd be nice to get some general feedback for us. Yeah. If you have the time. Yeah, no. I mean. I would say if you can keep it to that. I mean, I know we want we got out so late at the last meeting that I'm sure people would like to try to <laughs> get yeah. other yeah. business done before we, our minds yeah. are. Yeah, but we don't shot. have anybody else coming in, at least, that we're waiting on. No, but we have some, some other stuff to get yeah. through. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Discussions. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They're here. 15 minutes. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Please. Um, oh, we chair, need the chair. Yeah. Chair here. Yeah. Chair here. Slide yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Nice and warm. Yeah. 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 Turbo version. Well, I think enough. It's like a project plan. Uh, I'll try it out. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry for the size of it. I hope that you can see it. So you're going to pass out magnifying glass? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. This, um, <coughs> this uh, through columns. Through column R. Well, this is generally speaking the schedule that's attached to the order of conditions. <coughs> What's been added to this is the discussion columns uh, that I wanted to discuss, which are S and T, um, and the highlight stuff, the orange and the yellows. So um, the Columns that say approved costs, generally that was what the approved costs were that the board approved for items that needed to be bonded. Mm -hmm. And then the board has a multiplier that they apply to it sometimes, mm -hmm. some items. So the approved bond <coughs> amount, that those columns are the amounts that have been put up. Mm -hmm. And on the second page, like in column O, uh, Totally 149,500 for this phase of what you're dealing with road C is in. Yeah, column O. Yep, mm -hmm. on the second Total? page. Yep, 149,500. Uh, Q, sorry. Q. Q. <laughs> so small, That's I can't right. see it. Yeah, it was like zero. Yeah, yeah. Q. <laughs> um, oh, I see. Okay. okay. So, um, and then uh, in column R, which was what Carol was. Uh, mentioned was that immediately prior to paving, if you go to the mm -hmm. second page again, uh, the bond uh, is called for to be reduced to 1045. Okay? So, uh, oh, here is second that's page. Oh, that's oh, yeah. 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 So some yeah, of the line items go down. Now, and what I did was to make this quicker for everybody was in column S, I highlighted the amounts mm -hmm. of what items are going down, Carol, because you were Yeah, because I, I couldn't find them the right. other day, right. So, uh, uh, so that's perfect. what that is. I'm, and I'm trying to give the abridged version, so I'm not gonna mm -hmm. go through them all individually unless mm -hmm. you want to, but um, in the, uh, and then in column T, when I was going through this, um, in and I believe it's in conformance with the order itself, it says that we can at any time request a reduction. So it seemed to me that some of the, some of what we, of the work we did when we established this didn't make much sense. Um, for example, if you look at, uh, so the, column T basically represents additional amounts of money that I would like the board to consider releasing um, even though it wasn't part of the original schedule. Although, in many instances, in some instances, it is part of the original schedule. It's just that we've done work in advance of how the schedule was originally set up. Um, so, yeah, can I ask a question? Yes. So, so I see this is the work being done, and these are the, the costs and the bonds. So, yep. is there a column that says it was done? Like a. Um, we're, well, only where it's. What would indicate work done is that the money is being asked to be released. So if there's if there's a okay. yellow like in column <coughs> S, if it's yellow, 
highlighted the work stuff. Okay. And same thing in column T. Although column T, this is like new items that I'm saying, geez, well, why wasn't there any money being released? Um, so why don't you give us an example of okay. that? Okay, so um, I, I'll just go in order. Um, if we go to number six, which is in column A, um, the, we bonded um, 7,500 and 15,000 uh, in column Q, mm -hmm. and it was for constructing detention basins 9B, 9C, and 9D, mm -hmm. allowing them to serve as temporary sediment basins and construct swales associated with basins, stabilizing <coughs> the basin and swale soil, um, or mitigations four and five, what, all that work there. So in orange, that's what's been added is the detention basin 9B is 100% complete. That's the one behind lot 48, Carol. Um, across from the trailer, is that 48? Yes. Not, well, not behind the trailer. No, across, across from the trailer. The street. Like behind the yeah. house is there. Okay. Yep. Um, and the aura associated with that, which is number four, is also 100% done. And that's gone through two growing seasons mm -hmm. also. Um, Matter of fact, we did put up like a separate $10,000. Yeah, and I thought we just released 5000 on you that. We did, but, and actually, I, I think I even got the second five, but it, it's part of this bond. Again, we put it up separately previously. No, you didn't. We took the 10000 out. I don't think so. Yep. Uh, well, you may be right. Yep. I, I don't know. But assuming you, it's in here, okay. it's, I guess, um, uh, I think, see, my recollection is that we put it up separately because that basin... You were starting basin, to work earlier. No, no, because that basin was done when we did road B. Right, the so you were doing the work earlier. Four. You were in, it was, it, yeah, so you hadn't put up anything for phase four because... So you're saying we only have 139.5 up? Is that what you mean? Um, Let's not get that. Yes, I believe that that's okay, the you case. you might be right. That you'd, you had given us 10 and we reduced right. the amount to, to the 139 or 5 or whatever okay. it was. And then I thought that um, I thought that we just last month Release gave you the first year on that because based on Brandon's report, I thought that that's the status of it. I, right, well, I would, I'll tonight check there's out. no way I'd be able to tell I'll you any, that any. I agree with anything. The, <laughs> right? No. The, the, another as another example in, in the next yeah. line down in orange, it would say, well, the wetland replication is 100% done at the crossing, and that's work that had to be done in number six, but there's no money coming back, which to me is Well, the, the planting, the, the plantings, if it's, if it's there under one and a half times, which is just road, that, I mean, typically, let me just say, yeah. so again, without looking at your whole thing, but so typically the road is one and a half times, so when we get the as built and we know the road portion of the work that we're re requiring the surety for is, is done, you know, then we would release that. The plant, the, the area on the uh, wetland crossing, we don't usually release um, anything till the first <coughs> year. And I don't, again, I don't know if, what you, if you had that in your schedule differently, but that's the typical way. Um, so I'd have to look we, at that. What it's showing is that, that the bond, which currently adds up to, well, for this particular, for this category in total for all these items, 22,500, uh, would be reduced after the first growing season, and you would still be holding about eleven thousand dollars. Yeah. So, but it doesn't seem to make much sense to me that all the work that goes into doing a replication, for example, which is excavating existing soil, stockpiling it, trucking it um, to a stockpile location, and then excavating out the replication area and moving the soil back that was stockpiled from the original replication area, putting it back down, buying all the plants, putting them there, they're all there now, and um, and the aura that's next to it, the same exact process has to be done, you know, the aura that's adjacent to the replication area. All that work gets done and you get zero, doesn't seem to make any sense. I because. The plants are all there. Some may die, right? 
but in the scheme of the total cost of doing a replication in an ore restoration, the, first of all, the plants, purchasing the plants is a small thing. So I get what you're saying. So, they can't deliver right, it. I know. They can think so about it. That's why I'm saying. I'm the just standard throwing, has I'm not. It on the yes, table. right. The standard has not been to include the work aspect of it. But I understand your, your point. So I, I just want to make sure I'm reading it right. So like for on six, it looked like the surety held currently is twenty two five. Right. And, and you're and you're requesting fifteen seven fifty back. Is that it? I'm requesting fifty two fifty and ten thousand five hundred. So, yeah. Yeah. But and and the reason why it's in column T as opposed to column S. Column S only contains the items that were sort of scheduled right, to come right, back. To me. Right. But when I was doing this and I was looking at it, it just I mean, some of the stuff didn't make sense to me. So I figured we could talk yes. about it. Um, and then, um, you know, and then there's other work that's also done. Uh, other oral work, I mean, there's a, in the scheme of the project in, in and this phase, the bulk of the work in and around the wetland and this whole crossing and there, there was a lot of number of ores there and replication here. We've done that. We've done it. So um, anyway. So everything in orange you're saying is complete? Uh, no. Everything in orange is sort of like no, items that were added it. to additional request. No, no. It, it was just added notes. Yeah. Yeah, for you get to know what he's done or yeah. right. to this understand. Is, this generally is, this this was attached to the order, mm -hmm. so I wanted to differentiate anything that, he added in. Anything I added mm -hmm. my notes. So right. That's all. Um, like so number eight, um, well, number eight is scheduled, a scheduled release. Um, and. What are you talking about? Strip, Strip and stock oh, I'm, Excuse me, seven. It, it's weird by the way we numbered it, or I did it, but the, the, big, the number seven in column A, and then you go to number eight underneath it in column uh -huh. C. Mm -hmm. um, so those items are scheduled items. That's 15,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then one comment, Carol, that you had. Previously, well, the, you said that well, the, the the gravel's not down yet, but did I say that last week? Yeah. Oh yeah, because you didn't. Yeah. I, it wasn't but, down then. Right. But <coughs> when you look at this overall, you can later on go to an actual section uh, number twelve, big number twelve, which I mean is under column A, and it says install roadway gravel. And there's no money coming out for that. There's no money put in. There's no money put in, and therefore none being released. So I don't. I think it was just the way it was sort of written in the previous place. In other words, I don't think the gravel, us graveling the road, really has anything to do with concrete. And, and I and again, I won't. Um you know, throw out the argument. It, I, I'm just trying to think. It, it may have been again. It's buttoned up the site. If, if for some reason, and so it may have been if. To, to have that money available if we needed to, if we were at that stage. I think it was, you know, I, don't I think it might have been more an indication of being immediately prior to paving. Okay, I that can't year. tell you seven years ago. Yeah, because uh -huh. right before you pave, you do have the gravel, you have to gravel before you pave. Mm -hmm. And so that may be why it was mentioned there, but I don't think that related to actually uh, returning money because of number 12, big number 12, I call it. There's no money coming back because there was no, no money put up. But anyway, um, that was just a comment. And then um, in number nine, um, again, we, we I sort of touched on it already, constructing a wetland replication area. Um, we funded, or did I already talk about that? 22500 for the replication. It's 100% done, but there's no money coming back. It's kind of weird because, uh, so I think it should be uh, because. So are you asking for sixteen hundred? I'm asking for the highlighted in column T. The total there, not the fifty six hundred and eleven thousand. My request. Yeah. yeah okay. 
Okay. I mean. So what is that? So what is that basically leaving one year's um, plan? Like no, I think I just basically did. I think like seventy percent of the money coming back in like thirty or twenty-five percent. I think that's how I did it. Um, and I can also bring you the bills for the plants, so you'd see like if some of the plants die, replacing a few plants is like not a big um, cash outlay. I mean the big money involved in doing a replication is the machine time and removing soil and moving it and stockpiling and moving it back and it well I, I can just I'll just say a couple of things about it. it is that so first of all we don't have any asphalt plants so mm -hmm. even though you They're believe and well. I think it looks good and everything yeah. I don't have any information to say that the elevations are correct I don't have any information to say it's going to really function as the wetlands they're so that's, they're going this week. yeah so those are some of the types of things that we would normally <coughs> yep. want to consider and you really can't say wetland replication area has been successful whether the plants are successful right away it takes it does take some time there, there's going to be some um, there, there's going to be some micro tuning that may have to happen or there may not be any you know right. so Anyway, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say anything yep. more about the release of it, but it's not just as simple as the plant stuff. Um, number 10 is to schedule release. If I would call it a scheduled release, for lack of a better term. Um, then 14, um, again, the work that was described to be done is sub substantially done. The no money coming back. Uh, and you know, keep in mind that it also is if you look at even in the, you know, these, these are with multipliers. So the cost of the work was even a lot less, then it gets multiplied times one and a half or three. You do the work, right, done the work, and then you don't get any money back. It's a little, to me, it doesn't make sense. So I'm asking you to consider that. Uh, is, it, is it too much trouble to put some of the dates in here, like when things were done? Most of this was, um, the plantings and so forth have been done in the last couple of months. I'm just wondering because... All, all post-July because we couldn't even begin this work until July. So it's recent. So being a new member, one of the things I keep hearing about is dates. Yes. And so if there was a column that had the date it was completed, it, it actually makes it easier to follow along okay. if it's you know, going forward. Or I would say it's all the old, like... September and October. But I would agree with Liz because you know when you get the report from Brandon, you know it gets a little confusing in the report. You know, so it would be helpful to have it in the, the layout because, um, as she said, either checking it off and checking it off with a date, <laughs> it's helpful to know. What's the purpose of what additional information does it give you? Well, on the planting, if you aren't going to release the money other than what the order says, you know, then it's a year from the planting, the date that it was right. planted. So right. having the date is helpful when you're talking about down the road. And then what I have found in some cases, and, and it didn't really, I think it did happen on the first detention basin, which I can't remember, that one of the 8C, is that the 8C? You know, they had to re they had to put in some other plants, and they, uh, and they had to put the, because they had to do something with the outfall at one point, they had to do some oh, yeah. further work, and so they had to put some other plants, and that was done maybe say, and I'm just estimate, say it was done six months later than the yeah. other plants, you know, so having, keeping track of how many plants were put in and what they were put in is, Well, he does have to know, do, he is, re I mean, we are required to submit the report. A report. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it was confusing, and, and when Brian Butler was coming, I remember it was really yeah. confusing to try to figure out. So a column just might be helpful. Okay, I'll have it. Happy to do it. Um, 16, let's see. Uh, again, stabilization of soils. Um, they're stable. We just had a huge rain event two weeks ago, and it, everything, it's stable but there's no release of money. Um, so I'm asking you to consider, I don't know why we, why it was set up that way. It was a long time ago. Uh, the next line item, number 17, um, actually, according to the schedule, <coughs> we're supposed to fund $15,000. Um, and I'm basically saying, I think that doesn't make any sense either. We're supposed to increase the bond. In other words, certain monies were supposed to come back, mm -hmm. and then this particular item was actually supposed to be increased at this particular time. Um, so anyway, 
And your argument, though, for that is because it's not within a resource area? Is that what the argument is? Um, it's not within a resource area, and the amount of money involved, again, it's, it's, it's digging out a small little area. It's, it's a lot of money. Um, it just doesn't, I, I mean, the, the, a lot of these amounts not, not, um, I've learned have, are not really, they don't really relate very well to cost. Um, then the last orange one in the bottom left, um, the orders of condition, um, because this project has multiple phases, the, the orders contemplated that one of the line items we put up money for is called button up, which Carol's been not mentioning, and there was actually a cap put in of 62500 in other words, there's a certain amount of buttoning up money per phase, but if we were doing more than one phase at a time, which is actually what we are doing, the the orders contemplated that we would never have to put up more than sixty-two thousand five hundred, and we have. That's uh, in the order. Yeah. Well, it's in the schedule. Oh, where is um, it in the schedule? I'll show you. Is it uh, like the last page where there's the it's sort of a, a summary. Summary. Yeah. Okay. It's radio. Right okay. <coughs> it's not too hard. It, 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 this is the end, okay. and it goes through it, and it's supposed to be limited to sixty-two-five, and so we're actually that was over the limit. So um, that's an additional. It would be an additional twelve thousand five hundred because of that. So that's that. Well, that's the end of my. <laughs> Just so I think it was helpful because um, it was helpful for me to at least get it on the table, and sometimes it's helpful to hear something more than this. That, that the twelve five we just talked about. Yes. Is that part of the? Is that part of the one forty nine five? That, that's part of the total that's being held, right? Or is that? Um, it. A portion of it is, and a, okay. and a portion is related to the fact that we funded button up. In phase for phase three, we we funded at this point two bonds: one for phase right. three and one for phase four. This is phase four, but the button-up amounts yeah combined for those two money. phases yeah. are over the sixty-two-five by this amount. How did, how did that happen? I made them like gave you guys too much money. <laughs> I didn't point it out before. Okay. We were only looking at the face sheets, yeah, not looking at the yeah. summary. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, if the other commissioners can get a copy of this, so when they review the video, I know they'll probably take a little time to sink in. So yeah. that'd be helpful. Okay. Uh, and if I'm looking, I just want to, the amount of, <coughs> the total of scheduled release you're looking for, uh, so I guess that'd be S. Is that, yes. is that the 127.625? It's no, it's okay. the 45 uh, there it is. plus yeah, the yeah. 12 5 equals 57 yeah. 5. That's and the then total. I, the total, including column T. Yeah. The 70. Gotcha. So the 45 is scheduled, the 12 5 is that. I'm going using with the word schedule. <coughs> yeah. For yeah. lack of a better it, word. It, yeah. Uh, and then the 70, whatever, 71 25. Right. That's, that's the request. Right. And you got to figure out if you're at 149 or 139. Yes. It sounds like yeah. it might have been somebody yeah. came out. Yes. I, I, okay. I, I recall this. Yeah, no, I remember that yeah. also. I just don't know the way it was. What was how it was an applied. additional 10 that was <coughs> previously. <coughs> yeah, so we've got that. We can look that up. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's it. So I'll just add, so without your presentation, I thought you were potentially due 60000 That's what I was, um, and I don't remember how I came up with that. I came up with it at the last meeting, so, but because you hadn't given me anything, and I, I forget what I went through, but I think I went through the numbers that we talked about in our site visit that day. But, so I'll have to look through this a little bit and give you some feedback. Um, try to look. It, 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 would it be helpful to you guys to have a copy of the working conditions? I don't know if any of you yes. have that. Yeah.
I mean, the, the order actually does have the schedule attached to it, mm -hmm. the reported order. Mm -hmm. That's how we did it. So, um, and it has to be in the summary where it lists, you know, the limit on buttering up. And, so I guess a couple of things just, you know, since, since this project and, uh, and others that we've had, we did adopt in our regulations, let me just see, we did adopt um, some stuff about surety. And one of the things that we had requested was um, that You know that the permittee shall submit their estimates of what the required improvements within an adjacent upland resource area and wetland resource areas will cost including materials and labor preferably the contractor's bid to perform work so what andy's sort of saying is that his some of what he's saying anyway is that some of his <coughs> estimates were not were higher than what the contract what <coughs> it's turning out to be the cost so i think it may be that you would want to have some of that information you know like so if if you know, in in those scheduled T's or whatever. So if you're yep. saying that you know it didn't, it didn't, it's not going to cost that much to do that kind of stuff, or going into the next phases or whatever, you know, then it really should have something, you know, from, you know, something legitimate that the town says, okay, one and a half times this cost, we think we could get it done if we had to do that work or whatever, or three times, you know, that, that's sort of the intended part. Right. You know, I can I can give you the, like, you know, the bills for what we paid for the plants and we bought them Shemins. <laughs> but it's not just the plants. No, so it's materials, I labor, and yeah. um, and all of that. So, yeah. all right. So can I keep those, and I'll try to yeah. get them scanned in and to the other. I can send it to you by email if you want. If it helps. Um, yeah, I've got the second scan. In. Should be all right. And okay. then, so I guess we'll continue this on to our next meeting. Oh, so, and then. Um, I think we need to, you know, to, I can talk to you more tomorrow in the, in the, at the site about um, Road A, but we need to get some response back um, from Brandon on the questions that have been asked. Okay. Now, can I ask one more question? This may, <coughs> may be impossible, but you, how many members are here? Three? Three. And you need a... We more, need four. 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 Yeah, Is four. it at all possible, because I could use the money, for the three members to take a vote and have one person watch the thing and see if you can get the fourth vote they, at least by They can't line. tonight. They can't deliberate oh. and take any action oh. with the three. Okay. And I, I just I didn't get I didn't get the email from Jim until yesterday that he wasn't coming and I didn't know I didn't hear back from Michelle actually I'd asked her whether you guys were coming. I didn't know that, so okay. I didn't get word out to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I haven't assigned it a time. Next time, I think I can give you a time. <laughs> I know that you're coming when back. When is the next meeting? 18, 18, two weeks. Okay. See you tomorrow? Yes. What time? 10. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so where were we? Uh, I'm, oh, just one thing while we're talking about the dates. Um, one of the things that we didn't have on the agenda, but I um, was talking to Janet about this morning, is um, so we have, I've scheduled meeting dates through November, and then <coughs> because we didn't have quorums before, before Liz and Heinz joined, it was kind of confusing as to whether we were going to have more than one meeting in December. So based on the original schedule, um, I think we were only having one in November. I've added the November 18th, and I think, I know Liz had I, said she could make it, Something but. just came up, I need to travel. Okay. The, 18th, the week of the 18th. All right, and then, um, then the question I have, so December 2nd is the first meeting, and then December 16th would be the, um, the typically the second, um, the third Tuesday of the month, which is the first night of Hanukkah. And so I just wanted to throw that out because I didn't know whether that one might affect our quorum if people had plans, or two, whether it was politically correct to have the meeting on the first night of Hanukkah. But um, I'm, so I'm just not sure how you feel about that. So I wanted to throw those out because I didn't, I don't, I need to, 
what happens is that I schedule out so that I can figure out filing deadlines and legal notice deadlines to get it to the papers and so forth. So I just need to um, be able to tell people, you know, when, when our next Both of those be. dates in December work for me right now. They work for me. I'm not sure about the political correctness of it, however. Well, is, is there um, a town schedule for official business and is school closed or open? No, it's not. It's not closed. So I mean, I did ask the town secretary and the town clerk, and, and they, there's no policy about not having the meeting. I mean, mm -hmm. we're having the meeting on the voting, <laughs> which yeah. I had more questions yeah. from people on, yeah. you know, than uh, than sometimes the holiday. But um, but it's also nighttime, so I mean, that's yeah, something to consider as well. But it's also what nighttime as opposed to day. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I would say go ahead with it and just monitor, you know, if, if you get complaints, if somebody says, yeah, I so really wanted to come and yeah, talk, but right. I can't, then, okay. you know, going forward. Okay. So, that's um, the yeah. so, I'll just quickly check, because I had had a schedule from before with, um, so Jim was supposed to be okay through December, so hopefully that's still the case. And Maria also looks okay for the two meetings in December. Was that there? You were not sure about the 16th. Okay. You were going to go to the Or is it, yeah, is your daughter coming home maybe? Probably. Yeah, I have to go to the calendar. I don't know. Or you have to go get her or something. So the, uh, I can throw it out. I meant to send it in your packet, and then when I didn't remember, I started to send another email yesterday. And I'm like, oh my god, I keep sending all these emails to everybody. <laughs> I, and so for the newer members, and even for the ones who've been on for a while, I, I mean, I had been trying just to send the stuff out at the end of the week, so you weren't getting bombarded with stuff all the time. But um, occasionally things just come up that I'm like, I'm, if I don't send it now, I'm not going to remember to tell them about it. So, you know, yeah, if it gets to be too it. crazy, yeah. just you say it. Yeah, yeah. I read it when I can. Since yeah. I sent okay. it all out, yeah, it goes right. to one folder. Yeah, you sent one uh, late today that was great. It was like, um, I think it was about the pipeline and uh, had a little, oh, video, yeah, had a little yeah, video. I had to come back to it. Yeah. 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 It was really good to read before. Yeah. I didn't see the video. Yeah, at the bottom, oh. they're singing <laughs> in front uh, of FERC. Oh, uh, did they sing the song? I saw the, I read through part of it and I saw that someone had written a song. Oh, the jingle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that was good. Okay. Yeah. All right, All right so are we ready then. for the next topic? Yep. Yeah. Okay, charming wetlands. I, I just thought it would be a good idea for us to talk about this because, um, well, we all need to know more about it. We for those of us present, we will, this is, I guess, our first case that we had. And we're not talking about the case in particular this week, because that, that would have to be in public meeting. But I, we all seemed unfamiliar with, you know, the policies. And this lovely document, Real Light, Easy Reading, Farming, and Wetland Resource Areas, is available online. Um, and I've been... Through MACC, right? Um, or was that through DEP? That was through DEP. Where did I get this? Mine, my copy's DEP, so I think. Oh, it really is DEP. I just got it. I don't know where it. I Googled that case. I just, that you read about the hay. Uh -huh. And I eventually found the document by Googling that. But, um, you know, I, I, I believe it's in, I believe it's under DEP's website um, as, as one of their um, documents that you can use. Sorry, I'm getting cool. I can send you the link too. Yeah, if you think to. Um, but I thought it would be good for us to kind of think about, I know every case is going to be different, but to think about what our policy might be for, you know, what what qualifies as agriculture in, in wetlands. You know, this spells out pretty clearly what does, but that doesn't mean every town does it <laughs> that way. Um, but at least that we're consistent and we have a policy. I know that right before I joined the commission, they were finishing up a case on Wilder Road, which was kind of my neighborhood, um, about, about with you know pet horses in a stable that I guess when they used the street, the stream was going through a pasture that was mm -hmm. all trampled. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the commission decided that, that was not agriculture, correct? And mm -hmm. they had to repair the stream. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, but on the other hand, I talked to someone on the Harvard Conservation Commission who said they 
they just close their eyes to horse farms now, and um, they just don't, they're so bogged down with other things that they just don't want to even deal with that. And they concern themselves with, um, with new agriculture. So you're saying they allow it? Yeah, they don't, uh, they turn a blind eye turn to, a blind eye to yeah. it. So if it's already been in existence, yeah, they just and don't, they, they just know have there horses are some, for pets, yeah. they just... They know that, yeah, they know that some of those, um, some of those properties have wetlands, you know, in the paddocks, and they, they don't do anything about it. Well, I don't, so, and I would just say, so the commission doesn't go out really looking for these issues right. either, you know, it's really when they come up. And, and I, I guess I would just be concerned that um, in making it a little broader in the context of not just agricultural things, I mean, there are things happening all over town, you know, whether it's in the commercial park mm -hmm. parking lots or whether it's in the, you know, in, in a, you know, in a new, in an old subdivision where there's, you know, just, you know, things that are, you know, we don't get out to or whatever. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we don't see. Mm -hmm. I think it's when it's brought to your attention, you really need to be able to respond to mm -hmm. it, you know. And this clearly, I mean, this, it's very clear in here that a plain old horse stable, even if you give riding lessons, does not qualify, you know. I think it's kind of good if we go with what the law actually is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the bylaws, what? which is a, the bylaws are another layer to consider. Yeah. So the town bylaws would be stricter. The town bylaws are. So so yes and so yeah. agriculture um, has because they because the, when the state um, put the agricultural regulations into the Wetlands Protection Act, you can't preempt the agricultural provisions. Like you can't be more strict necessarily on mm -hmm. the agricultural provisions. Mm -hmm. Like saying if it's land and agriculture, normal land and agriculture use. But on new work, you know, then it's not l land and agriculture use, so the, the bylaws come into play. Mm -hmm. So if you're dealing with strictly, you know, somebody is comes to you and says, you know, I want to build a, um, a, a, a greenhouse that's um, over the 5,000 square feet or whatever it may be that might be allowed, mm -hmm. and it's within a jurisdictional area. Again, if the land is in agricultural use and they meet that exemption, um, if it's all ready, it, it wouldn't come under the bylaw. It would only be under the Weapons Protection Act. Mm -hmm. But if it's new, if somebody came in and said, I want to put in a 6,000 square foot you know, greenhouse system and it's not land in agricultural use, mm -hmm. then you know, you're like, all right, you're within 25 feet of the wetland. You're, if you're in the floodplain, your boundary is different. You know, if you have a seat coming up the hill, you know, so all those things that are different in the bylaw would apply. Okay, my understanding, and this could be wrong thus far, <laughs> is that if someone comes in and they want a new farm, you can't grant them an exemption, right? They Correct. Have, right, okay. So it's, this is only for old farms, like this, that can get, meet the exemption. And there's a date of when they started the farm, isn't there? So if you're grandfathering in, doesn't it have to be before a certain date? Probably, mm, I'm not Antonio sure about that. I don't know that there's any grandfathering necessarily mm -hmm. with okay. that because there are other grandfathering mm -hmm. provisions like within Riverfront. I'm not so sure about agriculture that they gave that, that there's a date. I mean, it may, when, when the agriculture provisions were put into the Wetlands Protection Act, um, you know, they were giving latitude to, or, to those, old, those farms. So it's not like they were restricting it more. They were saying this, these are things that can occur. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it, like different than the riverfront. With the riverfront, when they put that into the Wetlands Protection Act, that was like new resource area, you know. And so if you have a house in the riverfront, you know, you can be grandfathered for certain activities, right? But in this case, they were giving, um, giving kind of giving abilities to farms to continue doing certain things and mm -hmm. giving them more, you know, leeway to do it. Mm -hmm. So you had been talking about maybe some standard things that you might want to ask for people to provide. You right. know, some of the I mean, some, that was one of the things you mentioned anyway. Um, well, yeah. I mean, there's supposedly they they're supposed to supply bank statements at least or something to prove that they are a for-profit organization. Um, yes. So any any project that comes forward needs to show that they are a working for-profit farm mm -hmm. in order to be able to be exempt of 
the wetlands. Um, Correct. So mm -hmm. that they're not, um, so if basically if they're going to trample or destroy any resource area yeah. or damage it in some way. But my reading also is that they can't just, even if you meet exemption, yeah, you can't just do so anything. There are right. still standards you have to meet. Um, what I think sounds loosey goosey to me is that since if they meet exemption, they don't have to file with anybody, so there's really no monitoring agency, right? I mean, uh, they recommend, now you had said before you thought that, Carol, that when they did something, some sort of maintenance or something, put something new someplace um, within the farm that would still qualify, you know, meet the exemption, they're supposed to run it by us. But when I, I was just reading this when you guys were talking, and my reading of it is that that's optional. They're encouraged, farmers are encouraged to bring everything, even normal maintenance to the Conservation Commission, just to kind of maintain a good working relationship. Um, but I don't think that's required. Oh, maybe it's just yeah. encouraged, and so yeah. therefore we would encourage it. Yeah, but they don't have to. <laughs> so, um, well, they don't have to again, but then the question, you know, so if you see it, you know, and you don't know yeah, about it, exactly. and then you start getting the questions, and, and then you can go to them and say, look, you know, this is this has come up, we're not sure whether you meet the exemption or whatever. So it can go both ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, and I was saying to, to Janet earlier it, that the, there have been cases, and essentially even Jan tonight mm -hmm. is, is sort of along those lines, is, you know, people who have come in just to talk to the commission about what they're doing. You mm -hmm. know, so, in fact, you know, she was changing a commodity, you know, mm -hmm. really. So she, they had, they had approval to do vegetable crops. So it's already been approved. Mm -hmm. And she was just changing that over to, yeah. to blueberries. Mm -hmm. So it was helpful for her to talk to us because we had some things that we, it would help us to understand, you know. Right. One is she needed to think through a little bit more about what she really wanted to do with maintaining it. But then for our, you know, not, if somebody said, oh, how did she get to do that? You know, I mean, it's like, okay, well, we talked to her about that. And this is what we understood, you know, was going to happen. And so. Okay. Another thing I thought was very interesting in this, um, it says, the following general conditions apply every time the agricultural exemption is exercised. All maintenance or improvements at improvement activities shall be undertaken in such a manner as to prevent erosion and siltation mm -hmm. of adjacent water bodies and wetlands. So they can't just do anything. Right. They yeah. have, right. you know, uh, again, I don't know who's supposed to monitor how would you know. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. You know so we, we recommend that huh? as part of the condition. Well, well, so if they well, have the exemption, yeah. exactly. Yeah, they're yeah. exempt. They, the exemption. Uh, they so have to, to right. but nobody oversees it. Well, in, in another example, so not related to farming, but the under the there's some minor activity optional. provisions, mm -hmm. right? And so there's some minor activity provisions in the Wetlands Protection Act. So if somebody wants to come in and put in a deck on their house, an existing house, and it's within 100 foot buffer zone under the Wetlands right. Protection Act, but it's more than 50 feet away. Yeah they are allowed to do that as a minor activity with certain steps that they have right. to take. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like putting in erosion control or something. So mm -hmm. even though they don't have to file, um, they ha have to comply with the regulations. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially, this, this isn't, like this is the same sort of thing. You know, yeah. so they still... It doesn't say should, it says shall. Shall yes. be undertaken in such a manner, so they mm -hmm. do have to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, I guess we can't talk about the specific case, but... So should we work towards a document for the commission that says? It'd be nice to kind of distill that down a little bit. I'm sure there's a lot of interesting information in there, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think that we're asking a lot of the same sorts of questions. So maybe I'll, I'll try and take a look at that. But I think if we had some basic, I don't know, principles that we can pull out of that document for a handy reference. Mm -hmm. kind of yeah, it's just a lot of covers, there. you know. Gina, when you were reading through that, you know, remember how I was talking about buffers, you know, to the streams and even buffers to the wetlands. I mean, DEP also has, and uh, I can put a note to send you um, the DEP guidance for horses in particular, because um, I did send that oh. to Ms. Vickery and other people. I've used it, but you know, there. So DEP, I just was wondering if DEP talked about buffers much in that. I don't. This doesn't go well specifically for horses. Well, not just in yeah, terms of agricultural. I don't know. I, didn't, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, yeah, gotten there yet. I mean, I, I haven't read it, the full thing there in a long time. A, so. a document of best management practices for horses, which I haven't gotten to yet, and I, I'm not really sure whether that's just recommended or required practices. 
Um, I think if it's just if it's best management practices, it's just, just recommended, recommended, you know. Mm -hmm. But and so, but and every site could be different, you know. Um, so you might have something that's that's uh, doesn't necessarily um, you need. It. Well, so I know like like Marcos was going to look into like the distance, you know, what he thought, you know, what what sort of um, the, the protocol is from, and it may be that it varies from different different types of wetlands or sl different slopes, right. you know, or different upland vegetation, you know, if it's already vegetated, you know, 75 feet away and then it's not vegetated within the next, you know, mm -hmm. um, or, yeah, so next 75 feet, you know, then you might need it to have a certain other style mm -hmm. of a buffer, you know, so that, that can be variable. But I guess and, and there, there may be out there, and I can try to put it out to other conservation administrators if there's some, as you said, sort of easily distilled, you know, some guidance as to either when you need to file, which I don't think that that's, that every case is always different, so I think that's hard to sort of put it out there, but um, the kinds of information the commission will need is so different in a case of determining land and agricultural use. Mm -hmm. um, that it would, might just be helpful to kind of get that out there because that's not the normal stuff we see and get, mm -hmm. and and so it's a little bit difficult sometimes to say to somebody, well, show me your bank statement. Because I mean, like Andy was proposing to show us some mm -hmm. stuff, but you know, it's hard to ask somebody to show your personal stuff, and it, mm -hmm. so it's a little beyond what we normally do. Mm -hmm. So it might be helpful just to have some of that stuff, some of the criteria that we might need to have for information. Mm -hmm. Tax filing. What? A tax filing. Mm -hmm. Be a helpful thing. I also encourage that all farmers develop a conservation plan. Again, it's optional, and that they and that the farmer does it in conjunction with the conservation commission. But that's optional also. So, does it say anything about how much of a profit over what span of time? So right, um, they don't, and I wonder that too. And they also seem to say that the. I, I, my reading was that the amount of profit isn't necessarily significant. It's just with a clear intent that, to make a profit. So if they had a chicken yeah. and they sold 12 <laughs> eggs yeah. in a year, right. it's or, an agricultural farm. I guess right. That's I guess I'm, I wonder that too. Seems well, like they a stretch, some, but point there are yeah. some I mean, examples be, here, if I can find those. And Carol read one of them to us that are pretty good, but none, of course none of your cases ever or anything. <laughs> well, the question was asked of Jan tonight whether she was intending to sell them, and she her response without yes. any prompting it was, you know, I'm yes. intending to make a profit, yeah. not pay for my, you know. Yeah. But when you get somebody after the fact and they're trying to make it fit, right, right, that is definitely much more difficult. That's right. It becomes hard for us to know what's really happening. But I guess I'm assuming that it has to be uh, all year round, right? Like it couldn't have been profitable one year and then it's not for profit the next year and then it's still right. considered. Right. Right. I mean, I don't want to get into the nuances. I'll, I'll dig it up myself because then it sounds like it'll There's got to be other parameters work. too. Yeah, so there's probably a lot of digging you need to do to figure that out. Well, do you want to just quickly read these examples? Carol read us Oh, if you have some, there's some, some in there. Um, for many years, Mrs. Smith has grown strawberries on her property. A portion of the crop grows in the 100-foot buffer zone in a resource area under the Wetlands Protection Act. Mrs. Smith consumes some of the strawberries herself. Some she gives away fresh to friends and relatives. The rest she turns into preserves. She uses some of the preserves herself, and again, she gives the rest away. May she perform normal maintenance or normal improvement activities, such as spreading compost, without filing? And the answer is no. No. She's not an agricultural use because she has no goal of making profit. Okay, next one. For many years, Mr. Jones has grown strawberries on his property. A portion of the crop grows in the 100 foot buffer zone to a, uh, to a resource area under the, under the Weapons Protection Act. Mr. Jones consumes some of the strawberries himself. The rest he sells on weekends from his front porch to help cover his costs for fertilizer, water, and the like. May he perform normal maintenance or normal improvement activities such as spreading compost without fun? What do you guys think? I would almost say no. I mean, he's, yes. he's, he's trying to turn a profit, but it wasn't there also a condition in there that it has to be clearly farming use? 
Uh, that's uh, was that. Weren't there other parameters listed too, where it has to be? Well, you want to. Well, yeah, I'd like to hear what he has to. What do you think? I want to say yes. It's not a problem. Well, he's not trying to make a problem, right? Okay, so the answer. Oh, to recover, yeah, good point. Yeah, the answer is no. The land is not in agricultural use as defined by the uh, agricultural re regulations. Mr. Jones is selling his strawberries, but he has no goal of, or expectation of making a profit. Note that whether or not he makes a profit is not the issue. Rather, whether he has profit as a chief aim is the issue. So when you, yeah, this is the thing. When someone comes in after the fact, they can fit it, make it fit to what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so oh, I'm supposed to, to have that? Yes, that's my chief aim. <laughs> charge 12 bucks a jar instead of yeah. 10, right? Yeah. And then the last one, this one's a good one too, with Carol read it, but I'll it again. Mrs. Green runs a stable. Her customers board their horses there. The customers take the horses for rides on Mrs. Green's property. Some of the horse trails pass through the wetlands, and Mrs. Green clears the trails to keep them open. She also raises and harvests hay, partly in wetland resource area, areas and buffer zones, which she feeds to the horses. The customers are charged for the hay that Mrs. Green provides. Is Mrs. Green's land in agricultural use? The answer is yes and no. Yes, the land where the hay is raised and harvested is an agricultural use. The hay is an agricultural commodity that is sold by Mrs. Green as part, part of her for-profit activity in running the stable. She could just as well sell the hay to a feed business and require her customers to supply their own hay. Instead, she has cut out the middleman. That does not affect the commercial nature of the activity. However, the riding paths are not an agricultural use. Operating a stable is not commercial agriculture because no commodity grown on the premises is sold. The services associated with the stable, boarding, grooming, and feeding the horses, do not constitute raising an agricultural commodity. It would be different if Mrs. Green bred horses for sale. Merely keeping them on the premises, however, does not qualify them in the business in the business for the exemption. So that's clear, just pet horses. Right, right, yeah. Emphasis on commodity and not services for us all. Mm -hmm. So all things to think about. Anything else you want to say on that panel? No, but when I when we talked about it this morning, and I don't, so this is beyond sort of the farming wetlands. One of the things Liz had said is, you know, do we think um, that where the meetings tend to not? I mean, we have a little bit extra time tonight, but sometimes the meetings don't lend itself to being able to discuss things. Where so many people are sort of new and learning on the commission, would it be helpful to meet on an off night and maybe you know talk about? Um, sections of the regulations or section, you know, some, some the section of the bylaw or sections of different things to try to get everyone up to speed a little bit more. Um, so again, that's not really part of this, this yeah, part, no. but it's sort of the educational component of things. Do you guys want to or is this already so draining in time? <laughs> I could use it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I'd, be, I'd be more than willing to come up with a night. Pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad make idea to make it socially yeah. informal yeah. so that we can. Now, would we have to be recorded for this? We could still consider. I don't know if we'd have to be. I mean, you could decide whether you want to do. I mean, as long as it, you would open it to the public, you can even sort of do it off site. You know, okay. so you could do a working session at Slater's, or you could do a working session. You know, I mean, we've had oh. holiday get togethers, which, but that's, and that's, you know, so it's, it's more like a working session where you're really, you know, you're not setting an agenda, not going to deliberate on stuff, we're just educating. I think that would be just good just for working relationships. But we ha we'd have to post, and if somebody wants to comment, we'd have to let them sit there up. They can paste the paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, I'll throw out some dates. I'll do a doodle poll. I know looking I, at. The only sorry. thing I'd request is after 8, so my kids go down at 8, and that's uh, uh, 8 is kind of late a little late. tough, you know. If it, if it were on the off Tuesday, since we're every other Tuesday, the off Tuesday, yeah, that make a difference. It, I'd still prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a or I could do weekends. If you guys schedule it at 7, I'd probably try and make that as well. It's just a preference. Yeah. All right, so I'll throw out a bunch of different things. I know looking at the off Tuesdays for the next couple of weeks looked a little bit tough with um, holidays and different things coming up. But anyway, we can see. Um, and then the other thing I think I had asked I, or I put it out there once before, but would it be helpful to try to have a session where the circuit rider came to meet with the commission? 
And if so, you know, would you want it to be sort of broad, you know, like to go over certain things about the regulations, or would you want it to be specific about something, you know, stormwater or, um, uh, or then, I mean, they're going to be have some meetings on the new regulations that are coming out. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily ask her to come and just do that here since. Is there Delta tolerance. training? Is there a training on what's changed? There is. Um, they so they just they have just. Um, did I say? I think I sent that out with your packet. Yeah. They, oh, I didn't know it. I didn't read it. I just thought it was the new regulations. But if you know, did I send it the dates with that? I only made a copy of um, the effective thing, so maybe I didn't send oh, it the dates. I probably didn't see that. Do you remember seeing dates with anything I sent? Dates for training. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Well, if I didn't send, no, I may not have sent it. I know I sent the the reg change stuff, but I may not have sent you the dates of the training. Liz has it. We must. No, but I don't know if it shows, shows it on there. It might not. Dates. Um, all right, so let me get that out to you. Can we just uh, going back to the agricultural mm -hmm. agricultural use? I mean, Carol, you've been with the commission for so long. Like, what is in your experience? Um, is this like a, a something that comes up often? Um, and like, what types of issues typically come up? Like, do, is it confusing sometimes whether or not it's for agricultural use? So it doesn't come up that often because, again, we're not necessarily going out there and looking for issues, you know. But so, unfortunately, a couple of the situations have, I would say, three of the agricultural cases off the top of my head came in after the fact and after the fact issues. And those are always more complicated and just more difficult to work through because you just didn't have that opportunity to, to talk about and educate. Um, and then there's just been a few um, that have come in that are new, um, and I think both of them were gem mix. You know, we said Jim had done the, the agricultural activity before on Jan Johnson's property. I don't know if I said that at the meeting, but anyway, she met, she alluded to her neighbor Jim had done something. So Jim oh, mix oh, okay. had yeah, come in and done the first filing for yeah. for converting that field into the agriculture, and she also did a filing. Um, the trust owns land over on Farm Road, and she was converting that area into an agricultural um, area. And so she came in with a filing for that, which actually I think was after the fact. <laughs> oh, no, really? Um, you know, I mean, I have I have had people make certain inquiries. I was telling Janet that somebody had made an inquiry to me once about, um, and I can't really remember the activity. I want to say it was. Some kind of a some kind of a shed or barn or something like that, and I and the person had provided information on letterhead. You know that was you know this is you know this is related to my farm and and I'm you know I'm within a hundred feet of the wetland, but I'm you know this is what I'm doing and I'm not going to have any impact or whatever and, and you know I, I exempt you know essentially it was communicating, and I signed off on their building permit. And then when I talked to the commission about it, they were like, uh, you know, we, we would want to see that stuff, you know. So, um, and that's when we sort of really started to think about, okay, like, what what makes the, you know, exempt. So, it hasn't come up a lot. It's come up enough times that it's, and it's never really been easy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it would strike me as being somewhat difficult because there's somebody who potentially has, like, a business that they're trying to yeah. And you know, and I've gone out on sites with people, um, it's people who are new to town, who are looking to put in a stable or looking to put in certain things. You know, and, and if it's if it's new, if it's so if it's you know the the difficulty with um, some things is if it's shed. You know, if it meets smaller definitions, they may not pull the build, build a building permit. But if they pull pull a building permit, you know, then I have the opportunity to look at it. Yeah. So if it's construction, I would probably see a barn or see a shed or mm -hmm. or some kind of structure. Um, if people are taking lawn and making it into pasture, that's harder to sort of see, or not even necessarily pasture, but put, make it into a paddock. That's kind of harder to see. Now there was a woman who was going to file with us, and I don't, I don't know what's happened. She was she was very slow to kind of get her act together. <laughs> anyway, something must have come up. She hasn't made the filing, but she wants to put in a barn and she wants to fence off an area for a horse, you know, and so she was going to come in and talk to the commission with a, a, a notice of intent filing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so when people ask, and I can tell them, you know, it, it, it works. Um, 
I don't know new, you know new stuff if it's if somebody's buying a property. I mean, I just I'm not going to see it necessarily yeah. unless it's on the main road. You know, the other really confusing thing that we mentioned last time was that our the definition of a farm, according to our agricultural commission, is much broader than the states, and that can be very confusing to people. We have a right to farm bylaw. You mm -hmm. assume that. If you're a farmer under that, why aren't you a farm with respect to the Conservation Commission? So, mm -hmm. some kind of clarification, or I don't even know if the ICOM is functional anymore, but they do have that web page where it says the implication is that any any farm animals, you know, you you, you have the right to farm, and your neighbor can't complain about the smells and the sights and the sounds and all that. So. <laughs> no, you're. I think you're still entitled to clean water. <laughs> well, they might not think, people might not think of it that way, you know, right. they say, no, I'm a farm, in, in that regard, why not with the Conservation Commission? Yeah, I would say, I, it's really to answer Hans' question, I think most of the issues that we've had have been after the fact related to farming, and some, a lot, many of them have been, a, a couple of them have been complaints, you know, that somebody's seen something and somebody's been impacted by it, like a neighbor impacted by erosion from a, a certain spot was one project we had. Mm -hmm. um, are, are they after the fact because do you think that the people doing the work are unaware? I mean, they, they really think that they need the exemption or? I don't think that they, th in, the, in the case of the erosion one, I don't think they felt like they met the exemption. I, did, I think they didn't realize that they were causing impact. You I know, see. the sediment was off, running off their field, but they didn't know it was going into a wetland so much. It was like okay, so were going off site and mm -hmm. they didn't know that there was a wetland off site in that case. Um, The, you know, there, there was definitely one case where somebody was stopped by the police and they said, oh, I'm exempt. You know, the guy didn't even know anything about the exemptions. <laughs> you know, I was completely clueless. And, you know, we spent a long time on that project. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think those are the, definitely the more difficult. And, and, and you know, anything after the fact is more difficult. And mm -hmm. if it comes in as a complaint, it, it sort of doubles the emotion, you know. Well, at some point, once we get educated and know what we're doing, it would be good to educate the public about yeah. so that people don't make these assumptions. I mean, it's sort of mm -hmm. the other issue we were talking in that regard is when people buy a house and they're near a wetland and they yeah. don't really know. Yeah. They don't know. And they, they, they understood the realtor to say they could do what they wanted with their property. Yeah. I, I think you also, when we moved into Bolton, yeah. you could see the the right to farm everywhere, yeah, right? Yeah. And there's probably some notion that yeah. there's liberal like town yeah. bylaws about it. So I think sure. you hit on something there. Maybe yeah. either pointing them back to the state's definition or our own um, yeah. to make it clear that it's not carte blanche and right. whatever you want to do. Yeah, totally. I don't know how you would communicate that. We, we've talked in the past, and it's just a tough one to watch uh, real estate records as, as parcels get sold in land that border on wetlands. Uh, because my house had the, this wetlands that go through, and I, I would have had no idea you know, that I had to file, what I would have to file for. Yeah, so that's true no matter what. Um, and I remember, you know, our lawyers letting us know that and making a mental note of, okay, well, that's probably important somehow. Like, there's probably things I can't do. Yeah. But didn't know what it meant. You yeah. know, I, I knew yeah. at least I knew that. All right, I'm, you know, I really shouldn't mess around in there. Yeah. Let me find out what that means. But you know, I know a lot of people. It seems like people we've talked to. Too, they just had no idea. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. We could do this. Brought yeah. Yeah. Right. to Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From Sudbury. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we thought we could make a bigger house. Yeah. There are wetlands behind your. There are what? There were, yeah. <laughs> Can't do what with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's something to, and you know, maybe if we do have an offside day or we have a meeting one night just to talk about to see it, because I'm sure we can do that just to see real estate records mm -hmm. um, and what gets sold. I mean, how hard it is to track. To the thing depending. is, it's after the fact if you look at the real estate records. So it w would be better if there'd be some mm -hmm. kind well, of education. One of the things, yeah. Yeah. there's a group. This, I'm time, not sure yeah. that Bolton Local's doing it now, and. Um, was Teresa wasn't upstairs, was she tonight? No, I didn't no. see. So there was a there was a, a concerted effort by um, well the commission I would say first um, years ago after having some difficult after the fact filings we put together a little pamphlet so we have a pamphlet at that town hall and you know and, and then the website also has some information you know sort of essentially the same sort of stuff I'm not sure if the pamphlet itself is on that though that might be something to think about anyway 
um, some people then decided that they wanted to have like a little welcoming, you know, mm -hmm. basket, you know, and they would provide certain information. I don't know where, if that's working still or not, but they, mm -hmm. I did give them a bunch of pamphlets and they were putting those in the pamphlets, you know, just so there were, there was a group who was sort of monitoring, you know, when somebody new moved to town and, and then you got this little welcome basket with some information, you know, about maybe restaurants or, or whatever, you know, but little bits of information. Um, but I'm not positive if it's still happening or not. The town yeah. clerk's office tried to do it for a while, but not everybody who was into town comes into the town clerk's office. But yeah. you know, eventually they sort of sort of filter through there. But they may not be that new at that point. You know. I don't remember getting it four years ago when we moved in, and I knew no, we had was... wetlands before we moved in. Yeah, I would have noticed that. Yeah, but that that seems like a good idea actually. Yeah, I, I don't know the status of that now. Did you realize that with wetlands that you were restricted in some ways? Uh. Yes, I, I actually went. I talked with Carol before I bought the house, oh, and I, there was like a pretty long history with um, the the wetlands behind my house. There's there's a vernal pool right there. Well, I think in your neighbors house. initially, you know, told you. Did, oh, wasn't maybe that the that's case? Uh, like. Or yeah, but I knew the yeah. realtor said this is. I mean, you can see there's wetlands right behind my house. So, and it's interesting that they actually built the patio around a vernal pool, um, oh, which. My. Uh, we love, I mean, yeah. because you can really enjoy like, the frogs. I don't believe it right? was ever permitted. It's, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that, we're going to get approved, but, you know, it's really neat. <laughs> but uh, when that I started looking into it, I certainly learned a lot, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, so I'll put out some dates and see if we can find something. Okay. So we should probably move on. We don't even have to move on. It's a feature. Easy case to keep. Yeah. <laughs> to read through, yeah. Yeah, actually, I don't know if I brought all my file on that. Oh no, I didn't bring everything. I, I, I had shown you, and I don't remember Heinz if you were here or not, and Dan, you might not have seen it, but I, and I had shown you that there was a filing made years ago for this property, delineated the wetlands, mm -hmm. and you know the the. Um, so if you go up Long Hill Road and take a left on Teal Road, and you go to the bottom of Teal Road, it turns into Maple Street and Stowe, and Right around the town line is where these parcels um, come off of, of uh, Maple and go into Bolton. And I think the, the delineation was done initially years before I started to work here. And then, then it expired and the owner came in and did a new delineation. The commission looked at it. I think there were always issues with building because the frontage was in Stowe, but the, the buildable area may have been like in Bolton and, and you'd have to go through wetlands to get to it. But you couldn't, they, you know, whether you were going to be able to get approval to come in from Stowe to, to, to build something in Bolton was always sort of one of the questions anyway that was out there. So that permit expired. You know, nobody ever came in to file a, or any project. And I don't know, I don't even know if they really were, how much they were marketing it one way or another. But they must have been thinking of doing something at one point because they did two, you know, delineation reviews and had a record, you know, that gave them, you know, a period of time that the, the, that the delineation was valid, so this could do some engineering or planning. Anyway, so DePietro, according to the Stowe Conservation Administrator, came in to meet with her last spring, you know, and, you know, and she said, you know, gave him all the plants and said, you know, these are all the wetlands, you know, issues and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the next thing she knows, you know, she's getting this call, you know, that he's out there working with machinery and now you can see it much more visibly with the leaves having dropped. Um, so you can well, you can certainly see where the stream is, and you can certainly see into the back. I think you can even kind of see where the pond is. I would, if you go from Bolton to Stowe, it's a little harder to see than when you're coming from Stowe back into Bolton. So that's sort of one way. There's a gate there, um, where an access gate that looks like that's where they've gone through. So anyway, so yeah, so DEP, um, you know, Stowe, we sent a letter, you know, telling them about our concern and that we would like to know, you know, what was being anticipated in the Bolton area and that the, the town line wasn't that clear, you know, so we, we would need to have him contact us and so forth. And then Bolt Stowe, um, because they had sent numerous letters, you know, in email and then a letter and requesting certain things be done by certain deadlines has, has issued the enforcement order and none of the no, nothing has happened with the compliance with the enforcement order. So, you know, they talked to DEP and DEP suggested that they would, you know, get involved. So, so far there's been no response to DEP. But he did respond to the certified letter, right? Yes, we did get that he's picked the mail up. Yep. Yep. 
So at least forty eight hours to what forty eight hours to come before them that ended last night, right? Or was it I think it was um, I thought Kathy sent out something either yesterday or last week. So I th I, I know the ten whatever the I know, time frame is over. Passed. Yeah. 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 The penalties are really severe. I mean, isn't yeah, it like twenty five thousand and two, up to two years in Japan? Yeah. I mean, is there some sense of what's going on? Um, according to what Kathy's heard, he told either the police or somebody else, because I, I think I told you that when we were out there, we call, both called the police, yeah. because he was threatening and, yeah. you know, get off this prop, get off our property and so forth. Um, and uh, that he wanted to have a llama farm. Alpaca. Yeah, alpaca. Uh, an alpaca, yeah. is that what I said? Or either yeah. a llama yeah. or alpaca. Mm -hmm. So, again, you know. But, but I mean, that, that would be fact. one thing, but then, like, <laughs> he's not responding to, I mean, he's really now going to feel something significant. It's going to be. Like he's going to what? Feel something significant if he's got a $25,000. It just seems oh, like, yeah. what is he doing? Yeah. That's amazing yeah. that he went to the Conservation Commission to start with. I mean, he went to he, he just, he, before he bought the property, he inquired about the property yeah. with the town. Huh. And then he just bought it and did what he wanted. That's well, and I don't know how much he's done. You know, he definitely did some clearing. Yeah. You know, he's definitely altered vegetation within 100 feet and yeah. within the 200 foot riverfront so area. So, what do we have to do next? Did our letter say? Um, what, like I, I don't think I brought something? it, to be honest. I, I meant to, but um, it, it wasn't in my. Well, let me see. I, I don't know. At, at this point, he technically is. Oh wait, I do have the letter. Fines. I mean, he. He, he At this point, he's incurring fines. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know the DEP has issued any fines. You know, it said, it well, it said, uh, it said they could, didn't it? It says. So um, it said upright. Oh, okay, right. So maybe there's some leniency there if all of a sudden he got sick or I don't know, but yeah, yeah. if he shows up yeah. and says, yeah, sorry. Failure to contact the DP could result in the okay. commencement of higher level enforcement actions, including possible civil administrative penalties. So that is quite possible one of the next steps that might be taken. And again, I'm not, I, I kind of, I guess I, I feel like we're somewhat following Stowe's action because we know in Stowe he's in violation. Mm -hmm. The part that it's harder to tell exactly because we can't go on the property is whether or not in it's Bolton. occurred in Bolton. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look, and I, I guess um, I can send, or you can, oh, I sent you tonight. So Bolton is now online for maps That's for GIS, GIS. and yeah. oh, GIS. So you can actually go right. and look at the map, um, you know, if you want to do that anyway. You know, you can see where the um, the town line goes from from Teal down to um, Stowe. Now I haven't actually looked. I think that they left a buffer. You know, that they you can see the buffer to the next town. I don't think he clipped it exactly to the town, mm -hmm. but it could be wrong on the online version. We didn't clip it exactly to the town border on my computer and, and you know, in house. Um, but if you need a map, let me know. But that basically, that's what we do. Okay. And just see as far as you can see, if you think you can tell, if anybody feels like they can tell there's something going on in Bolton, you know, let me know what you saw and why you think you can tell that. I, I have not yet been able to completely say that I could see. But again, most of the time, again, because it was somewhat threatening, I haven't really stopped. I've driven by. And I, I found, again, it was easier to come from Stowe to get the better visibility. Um, but I probably should stop and, and see if the not good. Now, if uh, he's clearly in violation and the DEP is involved, is there, I don't know, is there a time when we would be on his property to see if anything would be part of Bolton in violation? Um, if they were to make a filing, we would be able to go on the property. That's when you really have the right to go on the property. If the owner? Yes. Yeah. So if they were to file a notice of intent or even a request for determination, then you can go on the property because you you do need to be able to see, you know, the active action or activity that you're going to be reviewing. What stage is Stowe at with it? Like they sent their letters. 
Um, well, they've sent an enforcement order, and I think and it didn't comply with the dates that were in that. And that's what Brian was saying. It was like just the other day. Yeah, I think that it, it didn't that he didn't and nothing had happened. So I did, the last I saw was just a response to DEP saying he he has not complied with by the deadline. So I don't know what DEP's next step is going to be. Our letter um, asked that he contact me upon receipt of the letter to you know give, let us know his intentions and what alterations um, have occurred to date and a method to establish a town boundary so we can coordinate compliance. So, I mean, we could, you know, we can, I think, I guess I would wait another little bit to see what DEP's doing, mm -hmm. if they're going to do anything more, and if he, he does respond to them in any way. But, um, this is sequencing. So, so what's the, what would be the value of our timing? So if Stowe and DEP are moving forward, and we're behind and we know he's in violation, is there some advantage based on the time? I don't know that I know that yet, but I think, I mean, we're not that far behind. Stowe meets on Tuesday nights as yeah. well, so, and I can't remember if they're first and third, but, you know, so if they're taking other action, you know, we'll find out from that, and then we can talk about it at the next meeting. I, I, from what I had seen, I and mean, he's cut this area, but I don't think I've noticed any and I, I know, I'm pretty sure Kathy said she looked at the stream flow when we had the first big storm. She didn't see any erosion in it or anything. Mm -hmm. Now I did warn um, Janet, and I think I told you this too, um, on the other side of the road on Maple Street in Stowe, somebody else decided to do work and kind of tear up their whole front yard area. And the, they, the Stowe Conservation Commission also sent them a notice, and that person is, was completely unaware of the issue. And so they are cooperating and working with the Stoke Commission. But if you see, if you get confused as to like one punch the side of the road is all torn up, um, that was not, not intended to have happened either. <laughs> it's but. on my right as I'm going towards Stowe, right? On my left as I'm coming back towards Bolton. If you're Bolton going, Bailey. if you're on Teal Road and yep. you're going towards Stowe, um, the parcel of DePetro's is on the left. It's on the left. Okay, it's yep. on the left. Yeah. Um, and the one that's all torn up on the right is um, not in Bolton. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's action that we really, I mean, you could certainly, if we knew that there was a violation in Bolton, we could certainly mm -hmm. take action, but I'm not, I still don't know that we have enough information to, to mm -hmm. I guess. I guess the question would be, a double violation, does that add anything? Because if they're in violation with Stowe, and we find out that they're in violation with Bolton, what is the advantage? Because the properties are, it's one property, even though it's on two yeah, it's a town. Two, two towns. Well, that they, effort. Yeah, I wonder, do they, does Stowe Con, Con have jurisdiction to Bolton? Like, no, they don't, but I'm just wondering what... Penalty one? The effort that we have to, to make, hmm. if Stowe's already doing it for Stowe, yeah. to get him to stop, basically. Well, they're not going to they're not going to be able to deal with it if it's in Bolton. I think that's the main thing. Is because Sorry? The, the Stowe Conservation Commission can't is not going to take any jurisdiction in Bolton. So right. You know, so when we just we have to get to the point where we can find out whether there's any activity in this town or not. But here, here will uh, will DEP take action if they actually go out there and notice activity on the Bolton side because they're statewide? They are. They will they're, take whatever action. Yeah. Yes. Would they notify us if they said? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're already in communication. I mean, the the email when they sent out the initial email, you know, they I was copied on it. So we're all in the loop together. So, so we will be noticed. So we wait and see. Yeah. Okay, land management. Um, we talked briefly about the geocaching request last time. Um, I, I'm not really sure we came to any conclusion. I kind of thought we said that. Everybody seemed to think it was a good idea, but we wanted to know where he was, where he was going to put the field cash. And it's on the schedule tonight because we were I actually didn't. I thought we just talked about it in just general terms of what kinds of things they um, that we might want to consider. Oh. And you're right. I mean, I don't have anything more specific from the individual. He did come into the office again one more time. And I did say, you know, that it would, be, it would be helpful for us to have more information, you know, where you're going to go and how many you're thinking of putting and, you know, that kind of thing. So I didn't get that. Um, okay. So I left it on the agenda initially because I was expecting that he might, you know, 
Okay. Submit something. So we just want a map from him showing where he would put it, it or them, not the Lord of many. Is going. It was in the, I think last time we talked about the size. What's that? The size of it. Like the size of the geocache? Yeah, remember we were talking about there were small boxes, there were large boxes, and do you have to. Where are so you we were looking across? for some other details. Yeah. You know, like what's, what the size he was going to use. And I mean, again, we talked about what we sort of knew about it, but we wanted him to tell us what he was doing. Mm -hmm. right? I that's well, I think also, I mean, I, having done some geocaches and seen how. People come from all different directions. You get your geocaches here, and you have trails coming from everywhere. It'd be kind of nice to know that you know it's not in a sensitive area. Yep. Is that that Five Shire? I don't know anything about that. Yeah. So just an update again on that project. I went out there today, um, and. You know, so we're coming to the end with the contractor, um, and actually I have some a bill, you know, from the contractor. They so everything's been essentially stabilized. The you know the, the dam's been lowered, um, the plantings are in. The most recent thing that they did is they removed their equipment off of the site and planted the screening between the neighbors um, to mm -hmm. a slope, and the sort of the entrance into uh, where they accessed um, into the to the dam through the um, Berlin. And you Dan, probably don't know, Karen, I'm not sure, they, they accessed the Five Star Dam through Berlin, through properties um, in the neighboring town that were closer mm -hmm. to the dam so that they didn't have to go through all the woods and the trails. And um, any of the neighbors there were really gracious about, you know, well, we have a memorandum agreement and so forth, but, you know, allowing this ac construction activity sort of all summer. So, but a good, you know, they loved the, the, the um, impoundment, so that was, they wanted to yeah. see it, you know, sort of maintained as that. Um, so they still have to do some work on paving. One of the things that they have to do is the, um, one of the houses they have to pave the driveway area. And then the common driveway access, they need to seal coat that area. Mm -hmm. So I was just asking um, our DPW superintendent today about, you know, getting kind of near the end of the paving season. And he thought we still were okay with the paving. Um, he was a little bit more of a question about the um, seal coating, and so I need to ask our engineers about whether this time of year is going to be okay for that work or not. Um, and then um, I did also ask the engineers to, I, I, I wasn't sure whether they filed with the Office of Dam Safety yet to um, get the jurisdictional um, dam to get us out of the category of being a jurisdictional dam. That's the whole intent of this project, mm -hmm. was to lower the dam so that we're not within their jurisdiction. And they've been out to see the final result. They mm -hmm. saw that. But I, they, they were waiting from st for stuff from our engineers to submit. And I did just ask them that question today. So I'm hoping that's on track. Um, and then. I'll just mention this because I think I already mentioned it before, but I, just as a reminder, I am trying to um, get scheduled a site visit with maybe a couple of people to look at um, using the, the rock that we had left over to try mm -hmm. to shore up the upper pond. Mm -hmm. and, and in part, I mentioned it because um, today, or maybe yesterday, late afternoon, we received the um, budget packet. Um, so. Did everybody get that? I just wasn't positive if they had all the newer members. It, it had, from I know, Linda. from Linda, yeah. yeah. I didn't look at it yet, but I got Did you think you got a list? Did you get it, Heinz? I don't think I did. Did you get a list? I think I did. I, I saw a budget from Linda Day. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. oh, I definitely saw it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Linda. I think I got two things from Linda. So Karen, I don't know if she put you on or not. And Dan, if you're interested in the budget, Packet too. I can I can send okay. that for it. So um, usually, and I haven't really looked at it that carefully, but you know, as, as Steve was mentioning earlier, you know, there's capital types of projects, mm -hmm. and then there's um, our sort of our um, our regular budget, and the capital. There's a capital planning committee that reviews the capital projects, and then there's the advisory committee who looks at our budget and they will have a meeting with us at some point usually I think it's in February might be sooner maybe it's in January I can't remember what they're looking at now but 
they will want to you know talk to us about um, you know what we have in the budget and so in this case you know if we got some quotes to do this work at Fifeshire the question is can we do it with the existing budget that we have or would we need to ask for more funds and so you know the cover letter from Don is that there's not a lot of money for new capital projects so the question is you know if we if our, is there if we um, if we can't get money in, in addition to what we have would we go forward with the project with you know what we have in, in the existing budgets so I will put some more information together for what the existing budget sort of looks like um, and what kind of stuff we have in that that's another topic that we'll have to go on the next agenda mm -hmm. to educate you a little bit more about you know what the, what each of the line items mm -hmm. typically been spent on one of one of the line items that's been higher the last couple of years and I might even say few years I can't remember is that we asked for additional money for land maintenance management at Bower Springs in particular and we've been <coughs> paying for an outside contractor slash consultant to do um, mowing the fields but also doing the invasive management and trying mm -hmm. to get the field edges back and trying to get rid of the um, the encroachments of the um, like Jan was talking about the bittersweet and the mm -hmm. buckthorn and all of that so I'm I'm actually going to walk there with Janet next week and take a little look again and see sort of where we might feel like we are with that project um, so we can have a sense as to whether we still need that same amount of money or whether you know we might be able to use some of the money that's mm -hmm. part of the intent of doing that and um, you know, if we were, so I didn't, as we go down the agenda, um, I didn't ask Rick Weatherby, but if we were to have like a capital project, you know, to go forward, that would potentially be like a land acquisition type of project too. That's anything over $25,000, I think, is considered a capital project. Um, so again, the open space and recreation plan, I mean, I think we have to sort of decide on that too. I, I haven't made my calls that I said I would do, so I need to call the state, I need to call some other um, commissions who have used consultants. So I'll have to put that Balls in the works. Maybe? Maybe. I know somebody, Balsley, that I might see. Yeah, well, they probably, I mean, they, and the consultant, again, helps, you know, move things along and helps get people to do certain things, but um, sometimes the consultant doesn't do all the work, you know, mm -hmm. that they just help sort of coordinate it, so mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure how they use the consultant if they have one, but that would be good to find out. So anyway, that's sort of the long on um, five share, but that, that capital project is hopefully coming to an end. <laughs> and under budget, um, basically, mm -hmm. because the bids came under. But we'll see. Again, the, the seal coding, if for some reason they can't do that, mm -hmm. I have to figure out how that works. Mm -hmm. So. Let's see. Let's get this I know we have minutes to mm -hmm. I do have some bills, and um, I might have some mail, too. I, I did. The, the ones we sent earlier? Yeah. You know what? I don't have a place for you to sign because I just had it in the draft. Oh. It's the bills I usually have you sign. Oh, we don't. Bills you sign. We just have those. I actually submitted and signed. Oh, do we just have a vote on Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion that we um, approve the minutes from what was the date? Um, October 21st or something? I think so. Yeah, the 21st. Yeah, the 21st. Okay, so I make a motion we approve the minutes from October 21st, 2014. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and so the bill that I have is from. Um, Kasasaki Brothers, um, it's for $23,655, and everything's attached, their contract information and the um, work that they had done uh, at this point, which was the walkway, the looming and seating and the planting, cleaning up, um, and Yeah, those are the things 
of it. Because now and then we still have um, 15,000 anticipated for the um, driveway pavement and so forth. Yep, anywhere there is good. So I don't ha I don't think I have any other actual things that in the um, sort of under mail or communications that we haven't already touched on, but one thing that um, I had in my packet last time that I want to touch on, and I don't know whether you guys have done it or not, but has, has anybody participated in the town center survey? Um, I, I, took, I took the survey online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I just wanted to, I had meant to mention that to you. You know, they're trying to get you input. It the last time. It's I did mention it? Okay. Yeah, and it's been extended to November next week, I think. Okay. Um, How did they um, inform people of it? It's about Bolton Local. Well, they've had these around yeah. in places yeah, too, I think, because I have the hard copy. I think yeah, I got it in the town hall. And then this was. Then there was a that postcard that came too. Yeah, that came in. The that, yeah, that's right. Well, it was sent to postal patrons, so it probably was sent yeah, to everybody in town. Did you ask your husband? No, I'm sure he did. He would have said something. I'm sure he would Anyway, I think that's how they did it. So if I go online, so can I see the post -tapers? Yep. So that's going to be, when does the uh, garage come down? That's so I just did a pre-construction meeting yeah. with them on Monday, um, yesterday. Jen, I'm just going to talk okay. to and they are still waiting for the state to give them the approval, the historical commission from the state. Um, but they're anticipating that this week. And so um, they were going to start with the 715 building. And um, basically, you know, they take the, the wood. They, they've got somebody doing some internal stuff, taking like historical stuff, things, beams and, and doorknobs and things that have, are of that kind of interest. Um, and then, then they've got a contractor who will be um, demolishing the building and kind of filling in the um, foundation. And they, I'm trying to remember, um, I think they have to fill the um, cesspool septic mm -hmm. container that's out there. Um, and then they're going to move to the garage. And then, and they're going to do that sort of in a, some of that's concrete, some of it's wood. So they've got kind of two separate ways of handling that, you know, the, that hauling and, and containing the debris there. And then um, we talked about, and they're going to write this up for me, so I ha they haven't submitted it yet. But the so the stream that goes under the building, and I don't know if you're familiar with that, Heinz or, or Karen, even if you've heard about it. So. Under the garage, the Smith's garage, the Great Brook flows under the building, and oh, yeah. it daylights I walk over there another like it. behind um, it, the ant uh, the place where they yeah, have the lights. Yeah, the yeah, woman who has that shop that sells the lights. Yeah. There's a barn behind there, and it daylights somewhere tough. over there. So, yeah. th because of the demolition work they're going to do, they are interested in taking a look at what. Well, th there's two things. One is that they think some of the stones have fallen in that are underneath there, and so it could be causing some flow issues. And also, they'd like to see what it would look like if it was opened up. So there's a concrete slab over it. So they're going to take that concrete slab up. There is some concern when they take that up that there might be some stone and rock you know, that comes up with it. So there may be some bank stabilization that they need to do. Um, but there shouldn't really be any issues with the debris getting into it. They're going to leave that sort of a last of that, that section. Um, and then they're, then they're going to move to the next one, 723, and sort of do the same thing, take that out. Um, there were a couple of things that we talked about on the site that um, I'm kind of waiting for them to get back to me on, but then there were some questions that they had too. One of the, so one of their visions, or their vision is to really get it opened up so people can see the property, you know, so they have a better sense of what this could look like opened up, you know, as a town center. 
And along those lines, there were um, there's at least one, if maybe not maybe a clump of a couple of trees that they are interested in taking out. And I said, well, I didn't really think we had talked about any tree removal when they had, when we issued the order conditions. That the phase was really just the demo phase. So I didn't know whether you know they they'd need to just come in and talk to you about it or how we would, we're going to handle that. But um, that's something that they need to decide how they're, if they're going to take it out now and they want to talk to you or not and come in at, and maybe at the next meeting. And then the other thing was um, the invasive plant management. Um, in our order of conditions, and I think it had said it on the plan, that, they, that some of the area was going to be excavated um, within the, so they've got erosion controls out there, um, the back of 723 and then the back side of the garage, you know, so the stream is kind of open with a couple of feet on either side of it maybe without erosion controls. Mm -hmm. And so the invasive plants come up to the, the um, limit of construction or the erosion controls on both sides, but then there's some that go beyond it. Mm -hmm. And on the back side where the garage was, I think they were really intending to I remember them that they were going to excavate that stuff out. The Japanese not we. I think you can see, see it there. Oh, it's um, just on the edge. So the contractor really wasn't sure how he was supposed to handle that. You know, he didn't know whether he was supposed to bag it, take it off site, or what he was going to do. So I, since um, Dusham Dillis is their engineer for that, I said, you know, talk to Brandon and get the recommendation. You know, so this time of year, this you know, with it, the Japanese not we seeded you know, what, what you should do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm waiting to hear back from them on that. Um, but then there, so then the problem in part is though that there is some Japanese not we beyond the erosion control barriers so of the limit of work where we're not going to be having them excavated like right at the top of the bank. So, you know, are they going to just mow that portion and try to see whether that portion, they can get rid of it that way, um, you know, so. The invasive stuff is still always a little mm -hmm. bit tricky, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that we completely came to a decision. Mm -hmm. and, and when we did it in the uh, in the meeting, I don't know that we remembered that it was beyond the erosion control. Mm -hmm. Even you know, I think when we talked about it, we might have said thought it was all all outside of that area. You know, so looking at it, yes. So if you're if you were looking at the if you were behind the garage, yeah. looking towards the stream, and there's Japanese knotweed. I'll tell you right. Yeah. I'm not sure if in the meeting we realized that some of it went beyond the erosion control that they were proposing. You mean or not. Yeah, I thought, I think. I don't remember that. that. I think when we did the site visit, we were certainly looking at it and saying, oh, look, it's. It's a great idea. I know, but I don't know if you said, you thought at the time, like, oh, that's beyond the limit of work, you know, how they're going to uh, handle it differently. Uh, I don't know. I just don't remember whether that came uh, up or not. So hopefully we're going to have some suggestions for them on it, but um, they are moving ahead on that. Okay. So the bylaws was another issue that we had on um, here. Yeah, so this was the, um, this came up with, well, gosh, can I even talk about this century? Can you can just talk about the, the, the bylaw itself? itself? Yeah, I guess we have the, when someone um, hasn't paid their taxes and um, they want some type of permit. Um, I think town bodies can reject the permit. I don't know how to explain it. Well, that's how to do something. But it didn't say, it, it doesn't say particular extension permits. It says the implication is that it's broad, and then in parentheses it gives some examples. For example, but an extension permit was not one of the examples, and the particular case that we needed was the extension permit because someone didn't pay his taxes and uh, also wanted an extension permit. And the question was, could the commission turn down the extension permit because he didn't pay his taxes? And this was a yeah, major issue. Yeah, I can't so remember what they were. I guess the selectmen and. Um, uh, well, Maria met with Maria and Brian met yeah. with John Lowe, the town yeah. administrator, right. and the suggestion was that the bylaw should, could, should be amended. Is that correct? Yeah, to make it a little broader. Um, it's killing me. I can't remember the wording either. It's this really little tricky wording yeah. where they didn't want us to invoke this for a the renewal. Extension. Or yeah, the, and I'm, I'm using the wrong words here, yeah. but it's something like 
they said, well, you really shouldn't use it for an extension. You really can't. And then when we read it, it was like, well, you can use it for renewals and da da da. And we're like, well, what's the difference between a renewal and an extension? And I'm not using the right words, but the words were so Nuance. silly. It was just like, no, that's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. But we were told, no, maybe it's not. You know, be careful with that. Yeah, so it was right. just make it broader to say, yeah, extensions and renewals. Sure. So I, I have to find those exact words, what they were. So do you think you could, you would figure that out? Or uh, in a like, Yeah. Because I think, so basically what you know, normally we do with, when you're proposing to bring an article to town meeting is that you take the article and then there's, they have a certain process of, you know, you italicize like the new language and you underline or whatever, the deleted language. You know, so the, we just have to figure out what we want to do to the article. And so now that we've got the budget schedule, we also have the articles. That's another part of that schedule that they've submitted. We don't have the article here with us, do we? That we could just because I think well, I have the um, I have the bylaws. Oh, the way it is. What yes. Um, do you know where the part is about? No, I would probably highlight it. You know, I mean, I it's short enough. I mean, you can read it, okay. and but th there may be more than one place. So I would just say, you know, you want to take the bylaw. Oh, here it is. Send us. Well, if we, if we can find it, I mean, maybe we can talk about it tonight. Just yeah. modify it. No. That's the other thing too. Do we have time? Yes. Uh, it's one of those. If I find it. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. We just have the schedule for when articles that need to be submitted and so yeah. forth. So we have time. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that it got on our agenda yeah. because even though um, it's not a conservation article per se right. nobody else was going to take the initiative mm -hmm. to to modify it you know and so if we want to clarify it in any way you know by adding orders of conditions or um extension permits or you know whatever language we want to put in yeah. you know we need to we would be the ones to, to take that on um do we take a look at it for next time then i just okay. i'm thinking just to save time tonight because like yep. if i can find it he said it's yeah, fairly easy might have a note on to it as propose well. those. I know I have my meeting like with Don stuff, but I don't have okay. it here. Okay. Um, and we can even send it around tax prior to the issue. Tax have the right to intervene in any hearing. Oh. That wouldn't be tax. It was commissions would have. Yeah. Not tonight. You will. Yeah. You would just decide yeah. it and then vote on it and you could get it from Yeah, what our proposed changes would Change. be, right? And then those proposed changes would go to the town meeting. Yeah, town yeah I'll just leave it on the agenda and either either you and yeah, Maria, I'll, whoever I'll try has to find it. It, it. it really is a, a, Hopefully it it it. It's a cheap little change. Yeah, it's just a... Okay. Including this or yeah, this one, or this, one, yeah. One, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe any, any type of license, make it that broad or something. Yeah, yeah. permitting. Okay. Extensions, renewals, <laughs> All right, we don't need to modifications. Uh, okay. We'll move on. Um, we did the minutes. Um, how does it get high? Um, TGP. Let's see. It's 10 o'clock now. Do we think we can do everything else appropriately? <laughs> well, there's only one other thing asterisk, um, which is just the open space plan, okay. and I don't think we can do that um, in 10 minutes, but I, don't, I think Tennessee Gas needs a little bit of discussion to Okay. So there's the walk on November 8th. Yep. I plan to go. I'll be there. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I don't know yet. Okay. I'm hopeful. Okay. I have something on November 8th that I might be able to switch that around. Okay. I would well, prefer to go to the walk if possible. Yes. That's great. And then. Um, Who's leading it? Well, Starting. kind of a combination. I'm going to meet with Betsy um, Taylor Kennedy mm -hmm. on Friday, probably. Um, I asked Scott Duhame, who was a former conservation mm -hmm. commission member, if he would help lead us on the trails. But he's not really leading us on the nature part, really. So the intention is really to sort of to, to walk it. And I don't. it depends on how many people show up. I mean, okay. it's a big group. It's hard to really talk to a big group. So I thought that part of the idea was to have 
Janet and Rona and myself and then just others who sort of know the area, you know, to just talk about, well, over here, you know, we found some vernal pools and over here, you know, this, you know, this is, you know, kind of nice um, undisturbed habitat or, you know, whatever, whatever we sort of see. I haven't been out there in a while, you know, so. Um, but Scott will be there? He, will be he knows the trails. Well, he can, he's going to be there? Yeah, he, okay. well, I have to remind him, actually. I, I need to say no. Because that would be good. I'm coming way around all that water. He said he's going to be there. <laughs> he's going to be there? Yeah. Okay. But how long of a walk is it? Because my daughter is six. Um, I think you can leave any time, probably. I mean, yeah. it's just, half I don't really, no, I was thinking probably it'd be a little bit more yeah. than that. Because I think what, one of the things that Betsy yeah. wants to do is um, I sort of show um, what it would look like with a 50-foot swath and what it would look like with a 100-foot swath, you know. So I think, that, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's probably not, not half, it's not a half an hour. Is okay. my guess. When you've walked up there, oh, yeah, it's definitely not. Particularly yeah, when, yeah. yeah. when she gets tired of it. Oh, yeah, sure. She's. I think we've there. actually met on a walk years ago for some reason. I think I. Oh, could be. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so the other thing is just so I did send out um, dates for when they're going, holding open houses. So I guess I was really just curious as to whether anybody has looked at their schedule and whether anyone can go and to which one you think, might go to. I think I'm going to attend the North Borough one. Okay, that's sort of what I 19th. thought it might be. Yeah, that one's the 19th. I thought that that would be, it's at least it's the one that's on the lateral line. Mm -hmm. And I did ask um, Gary Cousins whether he thought, you know, it made any difference, you know, to have people at multiple ones one way or another. And the only thought was if you, it didn't really matter because it's how are you going to get to the mic? Who's going to get to the mic and who wants to say anything? So I, get, I do think if we are going to, if we are thinking of going and our meeting's the 18th, and our next meeting's the 18th, you know, is, is, is does somebody want to take on or, or if a couple of people are going to say things, you know, are mm -hmm. there any things or do you want to just wait and hear how it goes and what, how they, what they say? I mean, we have questions from the beginning. We put in our letter that they didn't answer certain questions. You know, so we should probably be a little bit more organized about, you know, whether we're going to say anything or not, you know, or, or, or what kinds of questions we want to get to the microphone to ask. I'd be happy to ask the questions if we came up with a list. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think we should look at our letter yeah. then, you know, yeah. and use whatever we said hasn't been answered exactly. in the letter as the first, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. round of Makes questions. Sense. You know. Seems like if there are a lot of people there, then that letter alone will have the questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll I mean, how many times will we get to a mic? Yeah, that's going to be, it would be looking at all of our questions and then just putting them in order. Of, yeah. You know, here's the two we can probably bring up and yeah. then if there's time and we can... Right, and so and if there's multiple then, people, you know, and they say, you, each same person can't get to the mic, then you, right. you know, another person can try to go, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I will leave that again for our November 18th meeting, but I think we should think, be thinking about how to get organized on that. And any, if, if there's any other thoughts beyond what we've said. And then um, I did, I think I sent out um, that there's a meeting in Fitchburg on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Right before, yeah. I and um, I haven't really looked at the dates. Uh, I hadn't looked at that date as, as something whether or not I could go, but um, it just, it seemed as though it's more of more of the grassroots group kind of getting together, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, it's, it would be interesting to hear, you know, what is, what is being said. So whether, if there's anybody who can go to that, that would, I think it would be helpful to be knowledgeable of what was being said mm -hmm. and what the, what the strategies mm -hmm. and the processes are, because certainly that's what that group's better at doing, you know, sort of organizing that stuff. Steve? I know, I think it is the 15th, because I know I'm, I'm away, that's Saturday. Mm -hmm. Steve, uh, right. So I know I won't mm -hmm. be there on that one, the Fitchburg one. I might be able to push back to Jack. Yeah, I didn't even know it was a Saturday. I had my yeah, It's the 15th. I can't remember. I remember no, looking at No, I think it the 15th is definitely the day. Yeah, then that's a Saturday. I wish I was around. I'll be out that whole week for traveling, maybe even part of the week before. So. I think that's pretty much all I had. I mean, we did get our letter out. I got copies of Broughton's got a letter out. I, there's some other letters that have come in, you know, that are sort of similar and along the same lines. It's not much more. I mean, it's it's basically staying on top of the process and yeah. I did organize my file, so I, can, oh, I think we're on things so now. I was um, talking to to somebody about sort of in general about the pipeline 
and they were saying that um, one of the things is if it does go through, you might want to get your ducks in order to negotiate. Um, and so the open space plan, I think, would be a good thing to, to review so we could say that, okay, since you are going through these parcels of land and you're causing this quantified amount of damage, in return, we would like X. If you're going to put this pipeline mm -hmm. through and we get no gas on top of it, mm -hmm. um, what, what are, um, you know, how are we going to be compensated? And so, you know, we, we, put, we talk about this open uh, space plan as something we'll do later, but I see it actually tied somewhat to the gas pipeline because then that way we can look at all the parcels and we say, okay, let's uh, so know if it's yeah. a determined impact. Yeah. So, well, um, so as I said, we don't have any new hearings next week, next meeting. And we do have um, Central Mill coming back in. I mean, if, if we could, I mean, possibly we could get them in and out, you know, within a reasonable period of time and then spend some time on the open space plan, you know, at the next meeting and a little bit more on Tennessee gas, you know, might be, might be good. Of course, th new things always come up, you know, mm -hmm. so with some of the stuff we carry forward, like McBreen, you know, that'll come back up, but, um, oh, wait, oh, and Condine, we continue that, so I'm wrong. But if we can try to get to it earlier than 10 o'clock, you know, if we can get to it by nine, if we're, no, if we're not doing the farming in wetlands. Right. I'm uh -huh. not so sure about tying that to the open space, because that's such a big thing. I mean, maybe just to... Yeah, but to look at parcels, I think that's... Well, no, to look at parcels, not to, not necessarily go through the open space, but if we just looked at parcels and just talked about impact, that's one thing. I'm just, other than doing that, in what way did you want well, to Well, I'm not saying like um, completing the plan, because I know that that's a well, huge I, effort. Well, I feel like that is a huge effort, and I, I don't know that that's something to tie in, I don't know, unless you have well, it, <laughs> it just seems that yeah. it, it's, um, it's something that could be used as a guide in negotiating and understanding what parcels of land mm. um, might be negotiated Compromise. for. Right. Um, if pipeline's going to go through and they're going to cause all this damage, well, what are we going to ask for? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, that's, that's the big thing we're pushing for is to make them actually come and talk to us. Because mm -hmm. if, if they're granted a blanket immunity, basically, they don't need to. We're, we're just done. Um, so that's a lot of what Mac was saying, was to really try to push politicians for that and to push for, for that and trying to include us in the process or make them at least pay attention to state laws like the, the State Wetland Protection Act, which would force them to come to us to get an order of conditions. Mm -hmm. um, but if they get through without that, they they just they don't really need an order of conditions. Yeah, they so just kind of go. Uh, and we'd get compensated understand. on a price range and say, you know, we took a tenth of an acre from this lot and we're paying this for a tenth of an acre. Here's a check. Well, I think we don't have the answers to some of that yeah. yet. So I think that, I think what, it, I think what Liz is sort of saying though is to have some idea so that when we intervene with FERC, you know, and some of the conditions that we might intervene with right. that we want to put forward, which are, you know, we want compensation to be of equal mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. and that we want our wetlands to be protected to the fullest extent and replicated and restored mm -hmm. and, you know, erosion minimum. I mean, so we're coming together with some of those things that we are now going to be putting in ducks in a row, you know, figuring right. out the next stage. We've said what they haven't done. You know, mm -hmm. we've said w that we hope that the FERC will require certain mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And then planning for, if they don't, you know, what are, what are we going to try to mm -hmm. ask them to condition? And right. there is precedent for this, for towns doing this. Yes. In other cases. So it might be useful to try to find out what, you know, in Connecticut or other places, um, what towns have negotiated mm -hmm. um, and having that as a guide. Mm -hmm. I got an email from a group of students, young people, college students. I don't know. Did anybody else get that email? That's it. Um, this, he's a son of somebody very involved in the town who's doing some consulting work. Did anybody else get that email? I don't know. I'll, I'll forward it to oh, you. Oh, please do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's saying, do you need any help? 
with any projects related to the conservation. I don't know why I'm the only one that got that email. No, send it around. It's not a spam folder. I don't know. No, it's not spam. He's a, uh, he's. No, I'm not saying it was it. Yeah, yeah. He, he goes to, to Notre, um, Notre Dame. He's the son of somebody who lives on Still River. Um, I don't know why I would have gotten that. No, forward it because I didn't yeah. get it. I don't know why they didn't go through the panel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Were there other people on the list as recipients, or could you only see your own? No, I could see the other recipients. Oh, so a long list, or just? No, it was a short list. Okay. I assumed that I, I don't know who would have forwarded it to me, yeah, my name, related to this work. So. Um, he was looking for projects to help out and do consulting projects. Um, the, the recreational plan? Yeah. <laughs> space recreation. That's, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, he was looking to do this work remotely. Uh, that was the other thing. So, maps or for it. Could be updated. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's work. Yeah, but you're not at the stage of where we got no maps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say, but. So I didn't ask direct the gift items, um, but one of the things in talking to Janet and Liz this morning was that it might be helpful to talk about, um, again, somewhat related to the open space plan, but also there it, we, the town has, we've, or the commission rather, already has kind of a policy on accepting gifts. And I can't remember if there's a standard operating procedure or not, but like some of the things you know that Liz was saying, I, I was saying is like, Oh well, you know you need to do a title search. Oh, and you need to do, you know, you need to have a map and have, you know, something that you can record with a registry. You know, so it might have to have a survey, and you might also need to do your due diligence to know whether there's any dumping on it. You know, so there's a lot of different things that when somebody offers the gift, that some of you are newer and haven't gone through the process might not know, sort of the steps that we might need to think about. So I will try to pull that stuff out um, as well because. I'm not quite sure s still really where we're going with these gifts, um, if any of them are going to come to fruition or not, um, or whether we want to pursue them any more than we've, you know, we've sort of talked about already. But I thought I'd pull that part out and hopefully get the two for the next time. Are we going to I'd love to see the map. Mentioned this. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Okay. I just would love to see the pulse and the map of that parcel again because I remembered it as being contiguous with the Cranberry Meadow, but I th then you said that you didn't think it was. I'm not positive on that. Okay. Find it again. I find that one more interesting than the Lamson gift, I guess. If, if it truly, if Paulson truly is contiguous with the Cranberry Meadow. Okay, I'll look that one. The, the question I was going to ask, I think it just answered. Uh, and it was related to gifts. I was sort of thinking in my head, okay, so gifts and land management, because if you get a gift, you have to manage it. Um, but not. It, <laughs> we usually don't, but anyway, go ahead. You know, I'm just wondering <laughs> how that fits under the land management um, category in general for all of the lands that are, um, that, that we steward. Mm. Just the, well. in general, what our land management is. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, so I, I, I um, Again, that's a broader discussion, mm -hmm. so I don't know when we do our off-topic nights, yeah. you know, we might have a little bit more on that. Um, a real sh just short answer is that we decided that we really didn't have a lot of the time during the regular meetings, and so mm -hmm. this July we formed a trail committee, and right now it's working pretty well, um, you know, as a new group, and I'm hoping that, you know, we can figure out a way to keep it moving and not take a huge more amount of my time and try to get more people sort of interested in helping with it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and doing it, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can sort of, you know, we can be a guide, but we don't have to be the, the only ones, mm -hmm. like almost like another committee, you know, mm -hmm. really taking some of their own, um, you know, helping us out with this stuff. Um, we have an open space, no, we have a land management plan for Bower Springs, but that's the only property we have one for. Um, so I know that when I, I worked for a short time for Sudbury Valley Trustees, they, they're a land trust and they, you know, I guess more 
people available to do this work, but pay they people. had a yeah they pay people. I mean they they had a standard procedure for monitoring their properties, and it someone on staff visited each property at least once a year, mm -hmm. and they took notes on it. And they did what was called I like, like a I think this is a standard name a ba they baseline a baseline baseline documentation yeah. where they. So that's required for conservation restrictions. Yeah. So, um, so a couple of differences. So uh, some of the land trusts are accredited, which SBT has been accredited. The trustees of reservations, that kind of group, it, you know, they have gone through an accreditation process. Most of the smaller land trusts haven't been able to do that because the accreditation process is just it's like an entire year endeavor mm -hmm. so we do have a number of conservation restrictions we hold a lot of them and I'd have to look back in my files to tell you the numbers I don't have any of that off the top of my head mm -hmm. and we have a lot of properties and so we have not ever really established a good way of doing monitoring mm -hmm. I, mean, I bring it up periodically but you know I mean so the way the Stowe Conservation Trust is doing it I'll just tell you because they're just a small group 11 people basically is um, you know, with their restrictions, once a year, two people go out and you know we they contact somebody and they just say, you know, we we're going to we're going to come out and monitor the restriction. We want to meet with you, make sure there's no issues. You know, has anything come up? Anything changed since, you know, in this case, it, has anything ever changed? <laughs> you know, um, and it, it's really how what we should be doing. You know, we should really be getting out to monitor the properties. I mean, people get out on the trails, so you have a sense of things. But we don't do boundary walks, and we did get we did spend some money. So that was another capital kind of item, and we haven't gotten any new money for it in a while. But we were getting some of the boundaries marked, um, and we hired someone who used a um, handheld GPS, but it was a higher quality mm -hmm. than just like our phones, or you know, or the, the small GPS. I mean, we she, per, you know, instead of purchasing it, she rented it, but it was pretty accurate and. We, the, sort of the trial with it was that we did some of the newer subdivisions where we had been given open space because we had some boundary mark, boundaries that she could pull off of. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you're talking about doing survey, you know, it's really expensive. And so we haven't done that unless there's sort of been an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but, you so know, there's a lot more we could do or we should do. do. Standard you procedure, know. but we also need people to do it. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the reason we don't, right? I mean, there is yeah, but if we don't have a procedure, then you can't ask right. for people to help, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that could be something that's in the open space and recreation yeah. plan, you know, to come up with some standards. Procedure. You know, um, anyway. When we, when we purchased some land, like when we purchased a parcel of land um, in Rattlesnake Hill, one of the requirements of the state when we applied for the self-help, it was then called self-help, now it's called land, but a grant, um, was to have a management plan. And in that case, it was fairly simple. And I just drafted a, a couple of pages of, you know, we were going to encourage people to stay away from sensitive areas. We were going to, you know, have a, a, you know, a, um, a um, recreational trail. We were going to, you know, so it was fairly, you know, it's fairly small, you know, kind of thing. But again, that's something I, I, I person, a consultant kind of person could do, you know. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do it all remotely because they need to know the property, but. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things, that, you know, I'm near Rattlesnake in that Sergeant Gift area, and I hike through those hills all the time, and they're really, I mean, the, there's so many trees down now, and the, the bridge over some of the waterways is completely destroyed, spray painted, and where is this? Uh, that's Harris Farm. Harris Farm, yeah. Uh, um, but I, you know, I, I talked to Carol a couple of years ago about maybe going in there with a chainsaw and I actually do some trail management, but it'd be great to get a little bit more of that. Well, so maybe that property could be next for after Vaughn Hills for the trail community. Yeah, maybe. I, again, Vaughn Hills was such a big one of having made so, so much headway yet that I might want to do something smaller first oh. so we don't get this too discouraged. But okay. I mean, there's, a, there's definitely, a, uh, there's just so much trail work that could be done. It's just kind of getting it organized. Like one of the trail volunteers, you know, he's willing to do some work out on um, places where we just have easements, but wants me to make the call. So now I have to, so I have to make the call to the, the property owners to say, you know, I'm going to have some people who are going to be doing some work out there, which is fine. It's just in the daily, you know, on a daily grind, sometimes it doesn't. I don't get to that one. Yeah. You know, so 
so it would be nice, you know, if again, if some people could, um, you know, if they, if they took that on. But anyway, so there's, there's, um, well, so usually with the trail stuff, like as Hein said, you know, pe if people come to me and they say, there's a couple of different people who have sort of steward certain areas, and they're not necessarily, you know, I can't say that they're out there all the time because they may have asked two or three years ago, and I don't know if they're still doing it or if they've moved away or not. But people have come in, and like there's one person who you know does a lot more over on the Annie Moore area, you know, so. You know, I kind of, you know, they've asked to do it, so I'm expecting that that's what they're doing, but we haven't had them, you know, nothing's formalized, you know. And a lot, and a lot of people who are interested in trail stuff don't really want to be formalized too much, you know, they mm -hmm. like to just, you know, do it when they can. And mm -hmm. on the other hand, you know, having a database or something of certain names you can call in to say, you know, I, I heard that there was, you know, trails down on blah, 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 blah. It, it, part of it is, too is that and then one of the things the trail committee is sort of trying to work on is the effective communication so if i know that something's down and i say to somebody can you go out and take care of it and then somebody who's a volunteer or a neighbor has come to take care of it, then we're just wasting time you know because it's a lot to lug your, you know, your equipment out mm -hmm. so we're trying to sort of figure out how to do all that as, as part of the trail committee group but um the more people who will do it the you know the better i you know and I know the Harris Farm Bridge had spray painting, but I didn't know that, I don't know if I knew that it was in bad condition. There's like the biggest tree in that whole area went down, uh, I think a couple years ago, October yeah, 1st. I think we did, it so split I did in hear four about ways yeah. and it completely wow. destroyed the bridge. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that. Uh, I actually cut out a big, I mean, the trunk, just one of the trunks was like this big, so I cut out so you could actually get. Did you do it with your father? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we yep. did talk about that. Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's been so many subsequent storms and these gigantic pine trees. There's like a couple of pine groves where you know how they get, you know, yeah. 70 feet high and they're old and then they just mm -hmm. fall mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of worked on that a little bit. Um, but, you know, there's people that go in there all the time, uh, especially off of 117, right? They, they park and they, I can see them going in. And I wonder if um, there would be people interested. I mean, the, the trail group seems like a good idea. And maybe it's something where you schedule a time to go through the trails, and instead of hiking it that day, you know, you're there with your chainsaws and with some friends and kind of cleaning the trails up. Um, just thinking out loud. Well, we've had, we have done some work party days over the years, and sometimes that works out, you know, and again, if, if the more you can get the word out to people in your, you know, like if, if you use a certain area or from a neighborhood or whatever, you know, the more you can get people out and get the word out with them, because if, if, even if we put stuff in the newspaper, you put something on the website or whatever, could be you know, if, if people can come or they can't come, you know, so it's really got to be kind of word of mouth almost sometimes to get a good group to go out and do the stuff. I mean, for that general area, I'll just say now that I'd, I'd be willing to, to, to organize. I don't really know who would be willing to do it, but if I lead that, you know. Well, so what I w one thing I can tell you, and I can give you the name and, and, and number, you know, I'll say it now, but um, on the 117 side, Bob Romer, who lives in the house next to the trail entrance, he and his son and his family have done all kinds of maintenance. Um, they maintain the kiosk. They um, maintain sometimes the stone walls of poison Black ivy, kiln. you know, um, and they, they certainly if there's, you know, um, a vandalism, they've let me know, and but they usually will be the ones to care. They they repaired some of the bridge that goes over the main stream when you first go in. So they do definitely a lot of stuff on that side. I don't know how far back they get, you know, whether they go as far back as like Harris Farm Bridge or whatever, but they certainly. And, and Bob was involved, I think, with the commission maybe in the early, early days, but he's uh, one of the Conservation Trust met directors. And so they have a network, you know, of people, too, that they can, you know, send it out to. Yes, yeah, send me his name and contact, okay. and, uh, you know, maybe sometime in the spring um, can put something together. And if there's other people who are, we can pull in. Um, yeah, I'm sure the trail committee group of people, if they were available whenever the day was, they, they would yeah. be. A lot of them, anyway, would be interested in going out. The, yeah. That's their favorite thing, you know, is to bring the James Bond equipment, right? You know, so. I didn't mind it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of fun. And your neighbor, um, <coughs> what's your neighbor to the? Kevin? No, the other side. Her? Her. He had volunteered um, 
not last year but the year before, to go out and take note of where things needed to be done. So he was doing trail walks and you know and monitoring, and he did it for a while. But then he waited away for the summer, and then he never came back <laughs> to it. So, but anyway, so he might be somebody who, you know, would um, yeah. also be willing to do it. So, anything else? I don't think so. Anything else, Dan? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think you guys covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's yep. not too bad. Yeah. Okay, we're adjourned. We are adjourned officially.